a meeting to order. Can we have a roll call, please, Julie? Ms. Bradford. Here. Mr. Chanchuli. Here. Dr. Forger. Here. Here. Mr. Hyman. Here. Mrs. Kana. Here. Mrs. Stanley. Here. Mrs. Young. Present. Mrs. Penna. Present. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education was given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act as follows. On January 6, 2023, notice of the Board of Education meeting schedule was sent to the Star Ledger and the Career News and was also provided to all schools, PTO presidents, the BHEA president, and posted at the administration building. A copy was also provided to the public library and filed with the municipal clerk. Adjourned to executive session. Whereas the Berkeley Heights Board of Education seeks to adjourn to executive session in full compliance with Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6 et sec and, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act provides that a public body may exclude the public from that portion of the meeting at which it discusses matters related to those identified below. Matters rendered confidential by federal law, state law, or court rule. Individual privacy collective bargaining agreements, purchase or lease of real property if public interest could be adversely affected, investment of public funds if public interest could be adversely affected, tactics or techniques utilized in protecting public safety and property, pending or anticipated litigation, attorney-client privilege, personnel employment matters affecting specific prospective or current employees. Be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education adjourns to executive session to discuss matters related to personal matters, student matters, BHEA negotiation, and legal matters. And be it further resolved that the minutes of the discussion of any of these items will be disclosed to the public when matters have been determined and confidentiality is no longer applicable. I would like a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. We should be return approximately 7.30. And Justine. Justine. Yeah, they're all Jade. Well, I know, my, wife, my wife is Ginny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. you know, it, no judgment. <laughs> Julia was my wife's grandmother's name. Right. We, we like that. Right. We really like the deep accent. It's really nice. When, when, yeah. when, when you have, you go J-J-J-J. Yes. Our rationale was, I don't know if we can pick up another name that's not a J. So, you know, we, we basically, we turned our blinders to picking it up. I have a, a family who's all M's, and then they started to CH with their children, so we got Charlie and Chloe, and there you go. what are they going to do next? So we're now Charlie, you know, yeah, that's good. Good. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you put yourself in a corner. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's that's absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think... I think our oldest has it. Maybe it's because of age has it goes together and then sort of starts to go down there. But maybe, maybe it's age. I don't know. Yeah. She's the one I don't need to tell to, at least most of the time, to turn in stuff. Good evening, everyone. Um, Have you got it? I would like a motion to return to public session, please. So, so move. move. Oh. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Can we please stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we have a full agenda, so we'll get right to it. So the report of the student representatives, please. Hello. All right. We've got quite the audience tonight. <laughs> Hello, everyone. As the weather gets warmer and exams approach, many are excited for the summer that awaits. However, the GL spring athletes don't want their season to end as they continue to impress and improve in their respective sports. Let's dive in. 
The baseball team is currently nine and three and is on a seven game winning streak, beating tough rival opponents in Dayton and out and Arthur L. Johnson. The young team features five varsity freshman athletes who have been stepping up in critical situations. The boys baseball athlete of the month is junior Matt Schaefer, who leads the team with 15 hits and 14 runs. Two yearly fundraisers the baseball program does is selling banners to local businesses and having every player in the program try to sell as many t-shirts as they can with their name and number on the back of the shirt to their friends and family. The softball team is currently 10 and three, taking down the Highlander showdown trophy for a second time. The team hopes to secure a high seed for the upcoming county tournament. The softball athlete of the month is senior Elise Faxon, who is currently leading not only the team in hits with 29, but the entire county. Coach Aaron Aaron Lanigan said, Defensively, Faxon is just as much of a threat that we rarely have runners try and steal on her. She is composed and her pitchers trust her. Elise is a leader both on and off the field and one of the most humble players I've ever coached. Tune in to the upcoming softball games as Faxon is only five hits away from the 100 career milestone mark. The boys lacrosse team is five and three with a recent senior night victory over Morris Catholic. The boys lacrosse player of the month is senior Aiden Lindy, who leads the team this season with 29 goals, 17 assists, and 46 points. Tune into the boys lacrosse games as Lindy is only 16 goals away from his 100 career mark. The girls lacrosse team is three. And the girls lacrosse athlete of the month, senior captain Waverly Lauren. Coach Jacqueline Wells said, Waverly is relentless and hardworking. If we lose the ball, she is the first one to recover it. She is always willing to go the extra mile on the field for her teammates and coaches. She's the first one to ground ball and does not shy away from a challenge on the field. The boys and girls track and track and field team have competed in multiple individual and relay meets this season as they prepare for the championship season during the month of May. The track and field athlete is senior Basil Castrovinci, who placed 15th overall in the long jump in New Jersey at the Blue Devil past Saturday. Boys tennis team has a record of five and five. The boys tennis athlete of the month is senior Steven Manfreda. Manfreda's teammate Joe Laposki said he joins as year and has a really good winning record this season as third singles. He has been given the nickname the beast for his offensive style. He's a good teammate and always supports everyone. The golf team is two and eight with wins against Dayton and New Providence. The golf athlete of the month is junior Christian Sabatino. Coach Sharon Leahy said Christian has been a consistent top scorer for the team all year. His positive attitude and energy helped the team as I've improved the season. I, I can take this one. I'll take this one over here. It's working. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so sorry to say that I come bearing some dire news this evening. As the month of April comes to an end, the juniors at GL seem to have found themselves in a stressful situation. A very menacing creature known as College Board has been threatening students with the idea of looming advanced placement exams. But despite the test prep and studying, students have found ways to have plenty of fun in their clubs and activities as they move forward with the belief that it will get easier after May. Um, anyway, here are some highlights from April. The Eastern European Cultures Club and the Cooking Club collaborated on an Orthodox Easter event in the GL cooking room to learn about how Orthodox Easter is celebrated in Eastern Europe. Students had the opportunity to decorate real eggs in the traditional Orthodox style. The Environmental Club and the Animal Conservation Club recently collaborated to celebrate Earth Day. Students gathered outside to plant a tree on school grounds together while discussing ways to protect the earth. Students from the Interact Club, GL's main community service organization, met at the Wagner Farm Arboretum on April 16th to add 15 plots to the community giving garden and plant vegetables. The giving garden's name is indicative of its purpose. It is dedicated to providing fresh food to families, individuals, and the elderly who do not have access to nutritional fresh food. The Women in STEM Club at GL is organizing a STEM day for Columbia Middle School students in May. 
This event is open to all middle school students and is geared toward providing girls and students who identify as a minority in STEM with exposure to STEM fields through an in-school field trip filled with activities, guest speakers, and engineering challenges. In these past two weeks, music students have performed at the annual spring concerts. Small ensembles like the flute choir, string quartet, jazz ensemble, and a cappella groups are able to perform in the small ensembles concert, which was last Tuesday, uh, while large ensembles like the band, choir, and orchestra performed this past Tuesday. In the next few weeks, the GL Tri-M Music Honor Society will be organizing a cabaret night on May 23rd to showcase the artists at GL. In preparation for Asian American and Pacific Islander Month, the Understanding Asian Cultures Club met to make crafts like paper lanterns and origami to hang up in school during the month of May. And lastly, you may have seen this on the BHPS website already, but one of the biggest highlights of this month is the collaboration between the history department, the art department, and the Jewish student action team. So students and faculty met to organize a Holocaust Remembrance Day on April 18th in the IMC, which included a very special art unveiling. There, the victims and survivors of the Holocaust were honored through the GL Daffodil Project, because daffodils are a common symbol for spreading awareness about the Holocaust. So as students move into AP studying and transition to the final quarter of the school year, I wish them the best of luck, but deep down, I know they won't need it. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, do any of the board members have questions for the representatives, student reps? No? All right, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. While um, my actual part of the superintendent's part is super quick. I do want to, um, the remainder of it will be very long, but I want to recognize our educators of the year that were highlighted last month. In Governor Livingston, we had Lindsay Mirabella, Columbia Middle School, Christina Froelich, Mountain Park School, Maria Graziano, Thomas P. Hughes School was Sean Waller, William Woodruff was Mary Denninger, and Mary Kay McMillan was Frank Fabiano. So congratulations to our Teachers of the Year. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ann Clifton and Mrs. Penna to do the at to honor our athletes. Our athletic season has been amazing so far, and I've already issued a challenge to Coach Roof that I expect the spring season to be just as fabulous. So turn it over to Ms. Clifton. You good? All right. Thought I had my coaching voice there for a second. It's my honor to be here tonight, this evening, to introduce our 2022-23 winter season champions. Before I introduce our coaches, I'd like to extend a big thank you to a few special people and groups. First, I'd like to thank all of our coaching staff for their caring and striving for excellence every day. Second, I'd like to thank our parents for their efforts, all their efforts in supporting our students throughout the difficult process of chasing championships. Finally, I'd like to thank the Board of Education for their outstanding support of our Highlander athletic programming. Your efforts are truly appreciated by our student athletes. As Dr. Varley mentioned, the winter of 2022-23 was truly an epic season of tremendous accomplishments. We had our wrestling team win their first state sectional championship in over 40 years. That's a long time. We had our girls swim team compete, ready for this, in their seventh straight sectional championship, bringing home the trophy again. We had our individual, we had individual student athletes win county and state sectional championships. Our girls fencing saber squad dominated district five competing competition to bring home the squad championship again. And finally, our ice hockey team again dominated the NGSI group C championships and brought home the state title. Can you say back to back? Congratulations to all, and we are so proud of you. We have a lot to go through this evening, and we will try to allot the appropriate time to recognize these accomplishments, but be organized in the process. We will call each team and coach up to the front of the room, and the coach will have a few brief comments about the season, and then the president of the Board, Board of Education, Mrs. Penn, will present the proclamation to each team. I'd like to first introduce our first team and student athletes who will be recognized this evening. Please welcome our head boys and girls swim coach, Mr. Dave Kloss, and assistant coach, Grace Batingala. In addition, if we could have Ethan Wong and the girls swim team come on up to the front.
Come on up. Ooh, hey, oh, hey now. All right. Uh, thank you all for having us here. I want to thank the board for inviting us tonight. This is always a great honor on our part. Um, we had a, a great season and uh, we've had, uh, I always have a lot of support. Uh, Grace Patingolo has had been an outstanding uh, assistant coach. I have a lot of help from the athletic office. Uh, Ann and Ashley have helped us out, you know, every year. They're fantastic. So I, I just, I have a lot of support here and it's really appreciated, but really ultimately it's about these folks um, out here. Um, as Ms. Clifton said that uh, I'm, I'm particularly proud of, of, of all these folks. Um, I'm going to start with Ethan uh, first here. We'll talk about him very briefly. Um, Ethan is, was one of our senior captains this year. Um, he is a, uh, a county champion uh, in the uh, uh, 100 butterfly. He set the school record at the Union County Championships. Um, he was a Union County champion a year ago. Uh, in the 100 breaststroke. So he's really a two time uh, Union County champion. He also we have there's 11 events in swimming. Uh, Ethan holds five school records, uh, three individual and two relays. That tells you he is one outstanding kid. And uh, to top it all off, he's going to be going to the Naval Academy uh, this, this summer, about a week after school ends. So he's going to have a short summer break, but I know he's going to have a heck of a time. So he did fantastic. Sure. So I would just like to read the resolution from the board. Whereas Ethan Wong is a resident of Summit, New Jersey, and is a senior at the Governor Livingston High School in Berkeley Heights. And whereas Ethan Wong is a member of the Governor Livingston High School boys swimming team and is coached by head coach, David Kloss and assistant coach, Grace Patinglo. And whereas Ethan Wong won the Union County Championships title in the 100 meter butterfly with a school record time of 52.68 seconds. And whereas the Berkeley Heights and Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this outstanding student athlete. And whereas, and now therefore be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the outstanding accomplishments of Ethan Wong during the 22-23 boys swimming season. And be it resolved that this signed and sealed resolution be presented to Ethan Wong, signed and sealed this the 27th day of April of the year 2023. Um, as Ms. Clifton said before, um, the girls team, we've, we've been on a bit of a roll uh, the last uh, seven years. We've made it to the sectional finals uh, seven years in a row. Uh, we won uh, this year. It's our first title in a couple of years, uh, but this is our fourth title overall in, in seven years. And, and uh, we're not quite state champions like the hockey team. And, and uh, I'm really proud of wrestling and all these other folks who've been out there. Uh, but I am especially proud of our team. Uh, we've been a model of consistency over the last seven years. Uh, we've had outstanding senior leadership. We've had great kids on the team, and they've all bought in uh, to the, the idea that our goal every year is to get back to sectional final. And we've been able to do that. And uh, I just can't tell you how proud I am of these young ladies. They're just a fantastic group. So kudos to them. Sure. Sure. All right. So, whereas the varsity girls swimming team of Governor Livingston High School, located in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, consists of swimmers Kate Curran, Ava Beagle, Claire Kim, Grace Charbonneau, Lillian Arts, Loji Abara Maya, Hannah Beffler, Nora Bowen, Caitlin Casasado, Anna Froloff, Nina Froloff, Natalie Gakel, Sarah Gleason, Caitlin Hughes. Claire Gian, Nia Joseph, Lindsay Kim, Madeline, uh, Madeline Kinney, Ariana Maori, Jade McCarthy, Michaela Pires, uh, Pippa Rymacher, Catherine Roisman, Julieta Stravio, Anastrid, and Sophie Tasquilla. Thank you. Whereas the team is coached by head coach David Kloss and assistant coach Greg Spatingolo, and whereas the varsity girls swimming team of Governor Livingston High School earned the title of NJSIAA, Central C section champions by defeating Shore Regional High School by the score of 92 78 on February 16, 2023, 
Neptune Aquatic Center. And whereas the Highlanders completed the season with a record of eight wins, five losses, and the program has competed in the NJSIAA State Sectional Championship meet for the seventh consecutive year. And whereas each of its members contributed individually to the team during its championship run. And whereas the Berkeley Heights and Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this team and its coaches. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the 2022-2023 Girls Swim Team and congratulate the student athletes and coaching staff on their outstanding championship season. And be it resolved that a signed and sealed copy of this resolution be framed and kept on display at Governor Livingston High School. Signed and sealed this, the 27th day of April of the year 2023. Everyone get to your front with the coaches, sure. and uh, Tingle has some uh, copies of the mm -hmm. proclamation for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would now like to introduce our assistant wrestling coach, Mr. DJ McHugh, also a GL alum, and he will be recognizing Brandon Rayak as a Union County ch uh, champion in our state champion wrestling program. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Coach DJ McHugh. Uh, as Ms. Clifton said, I am an alumni of uh, 10 years ago. Time flies. Uh, so it's a special honor for me to be here tonight. Uh, but first, I want to thank the Board of Education, Dr. Varley, um, and Clifton, and our administrative team, and uh, almost most importantly, the parents who support our student-athletes day in and day out throughout the year. Uh, first, the wrestling team would like to congratulate Brandon Rayak on being on the Union County champion. Uh, Brandon works very hard in the room, and we're excited to see what he can do over the next couple of years. Good job, Brandon. Okay. Whereas Brandon Rayak is a resident of Mountainside, New Jersey, and is a sophomore at Governor Livingston High School in Berkeley Heights. And whereas Brandon Rayak is a member of the Governor Livingston High School wrestling team and is coached by head coach Rick Ortega and assistant coach Dan Hilt, and DJ McHugh, and volunteer coaches Mike Stepien, Turner Haddad, and Jared Van Oostendorf. And whereas Brandon Rake achieved being the 113 pound Union County champion, and whereas the Berkeley Heights and Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this outstanding student athlete. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the outstanding accomplishments of Brandon Rake during the 2022. 2023 wrestling season, and be it resolved that the signed and sealed resolution be presented to Brandon Rayak, signed and sealed this 27th day of April of the year 2023. Uh, so this speech I'm reading is on behalf of Coach Ortega and our entire wrestling staff. Uh, what a special year it has been for the Highlander wrestling program. Um, funny enough, as I said, when I left 10 years ago, Coach Ortega stepped in. Uh, that program that Coach Ortega inherited 
only had 19 kids on the roster and only about 11 kids total uh, in the PAL youth wrestling program. Today, we're happy to report that we have almost 100 youth wrestlers in the PAL program and almost 40 on our wrestling roster. Uh, so that's a testament not only to the hard work that Coach Ortega's put in the past decade, uh, but also to Bill Faxon uh, and his PAL staff, the work that they've done over the past 10 years, really promoting and supporting the sport uh, through advocating through their, their sons and daughters now in the youth program, uh, to our administrative team here at the high school, constantly supporting us, um, and then to the wrestlers' parents, like I mentioned earlier, for supporting us throughout the uh, run not only this year, but throughout their wrestling careers. Um, and then lastly, we like to thank the wrestlers for coming in every day, putting in a lot of hard work day in and day out. Uh, wrestling is truly a mental and physical grind. Uh, and I don't use that word lightly. It is the toughest sport in the world for a reason. And um, that will not only make these men better on the mat, but in the classroom and in life as well. Uh, so, with that being said, uh, the Highlander wrestling team was able to finish with a 17-4 and record this season. We had a second-place finish in the Union County Tournament, a second-place finish at the District Tournament, and we were ranked sixth in the region overall. The team was fortunate enough to go up to, what, up to Caldwell High School and upset a higher seed for the first-ever sectional final win in, uh, or since 1981, uh, as Ms. Clifton said earlier, so the first time in over 40 years. Uh, so congratulations to them. Uh, all in all, most of our team is returning next season, and we look forward to continuing to build uh, the PAL program and our current program to hopefully get a group championship soon. Thank you to everyone that supports the wrestling program, and thank you to the wrestlers and their families, and have a great night. Thank you. Hey. Whereas the varsity wrestling team of Governor Livingston High School, located in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, consists of players. Can I read the names? Yep. Dante Joya, Jack Huss, Joseph Bartolo, Alan Batista, Brian Batista, Anchong Bai, Braden Kakamo, Daniel Capone, Vincent Capone, Jackson Conklin, Christian Cottom, James Dulabani, Michael Dulabani, Joseph Dasty, Thomas DeNorcio, Nathan Faxon, Christian Joya, Christopher Haddad, Patrick Huss, Bennett Gion, Aditya Khanna, Jake Kreisberg, Stephen Manfreda, Andre Popescu, Brandon Rayak, Enrique Ribirio, James Rubino, Saigo Rusinski Taniyama, Sear Ryan, or Trip, Christian Sabatino, Theodore Scalora, Patrick Sheehan, Lucas Villanueva, Jace Wonka, Jeffrey Wass, Grant Young, and managers, Ava Huss, Elise Faxon, Bridget Boreal, Sarah Fredella, Riley House, and Amanda Lindy. Thank you. Whereas the team is coached by head coach Rick Ortega and assistant coach Dan Hilt, DJ McHugh, and volunteer coaches Mike Stepien, Turner Haddad, and Jared Van Oostendorf. And whereas the varsity wrestling team of Governor Livingston High School earned the title of North Two Group Two sectional champs by defeating Caldwell by the score of 42 to 30 on February 8, 2023 at Caldwell High School. And whereas the Highlanders com completed the season with a record of 17 wins, three losses, and whereas the team saw each of its members contribute individually to the team during its championship run. And whereas the Berkeley Heights and Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this team and its coaches. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the 2022-2023 varsity wrestling team and congratulate the student athletes and coaching staff on their outstanding and championship season. And be it resolved that a signed and sealed copy of this resolution be framed and kept on display at Governor Livingston High School. Signed and sealed this the 27th day of April of the year 2023. <laughs>
Now, please welcome our head indoor track and field coach, Mr. Dan Guyton, as he recognizes Abigail Ha and Jared Lee as the NJSI state sectional individual track champions. Good evening. Uh, let's start by thanking Dr. Barley and the Board of Education for your, you know, all your amazing uh, support and for this uh, tremendous invitation um, in this honor this evening. Um, next, I want to thank uh, our administration, Rob Nixon and Clifton, um, for you know everything they do for us and, and for all, all the tremendous support. Um, next, I want to thank my my assistant coaches for all their dedication and passion, uh, especially our sprint coach, Zach Rusty, who's here with us tonight. Um, unfortunately, our first champion, Jared Lee, our sectional champion, 55 meter dash uh, winner, is, uh, sent me an email this morning. He's under the weather, he's not feeling well. So I'm, I, I'm hoping he's able to catch the live stream. Um, he um, had a sensational season. He ran 6.62 uh, seconds, which represents the third fastest time in the 55 meter dash in my 13 years as the head coach uh, winter track here at Governor Leakson High School. Um, at the Union County Championships, he had a literally a tie to the hundredth of a second. Um, and they went to the camera and they literally had to drop the line to a thousandth of a second to figure out who was first and second. So he was not happy, I know, with that result, finishing second. And he went out there, you know, at the sectional championships and, and did a fantastic job. He qualified all the way to the groups and then on to the meet of champions and was in the top 25 in the state of New Jersey in 55-meter dash. So we couldn't be more proud of our senior sprinter, Jared Lee, and his uh, coach, Zach Rushdie, and the job that they did. So congratulations to Jared Lee. Whereas Jared Lee is a resident of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and is a senior at the Governor Livingston's High School in Berkeley Heights, and whereas Jared Lee is a member of the Governor Livingston High School winter track team, and is coached by head coach Daniel Guyton and assistant coach Lisa Dybar, Emma Drake, Dominique Astroyani, Zakaria Roshdi, and Carmen Scuderi. And whereas Jared Lee achieved being the North 2 Group 2 sectional state champion in the 55 meter dash with a time of 6.62 seconds. And whereas the Berkeley Hanson Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this outstanding student athlete. And now therefore be it resolved that the Berkeley Hanson Board of Education members applaud the outstanding accomplishments of Jared Lee during this 2022-2023 season and be it resolved that this signed and sealed re resolution be presented to Jared Lee. Signed and sealed is the 27th day of April of the year 2023. Our next track champion is Abby Ha. She was the state sectional champion in the pole vault, jumping a height of seven feet, six inches. Um, she's also our top hurdler and our top high jumper. Um, early in the season, she actually didn't have the, you know, the same results she had the sectional meet. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't say that she was definitely a favorite, but she showed up that day and had her by far best meet of the year and uh, was a clutch performer and went and won the section. And then she still had the hurdles in the high jump. So then she goes to the hurdles and takes a tumble over the hurdles and fell pretty hard. We went to the athletic trainer, got cleared, went over to the high jump and 
at the actually winning height on her first attempt, she had the best jump that I've ever seen her have, and she barely nicked it by like, and uh, she was this close to also being the high jump champion too. So it was an incredible performance and seeing her boot on her foot here for the first time. I know that, uh, you know, from past experience, she, she bounces back pretty quick and, and she's going to be ready to go soon. So congratulations. Great job, Abby. Whereas Abigail Ha is a resident of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and is a junior at the Governor Livingston High School in Berkeley Heights. And whereas Abigail Ha is a member of the Governor Livingston High School winter track team and is coached by head coach Daniel Guyton, assistant coach Lisa Dybar, Emma Drake, Dominique Mastriani, Zakaria Roshdi, and Carmen Scuderi. And whereas Abigail Ha achieved being the North 2 Group 2 sectional state champion, in the pole vault with a height of seven feet, six inches. And whereas the Berkeley Heights and Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this outstanding student athlete. And now therefore be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the outstanding accomplishments of Abigail Ha during this 2022-2023 season. And be it resolved that this signed and sealed resolution be presented to Abigail Ha. Signed and sealed this the 27th day of April of the year It's my honor to bring up our boys and girls head fencing coach, Mr. What Michael Wang and his staff to acknowledge the 2023 girls fencing Sabre squad district five state champions. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, hello, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I would want to give a huge thank you to the Board of Education. Uh, they've seen this team through humble beginnings uh, to now the program growing to its largest size of with 60 fencers signed up at the beginning of the season. Um, I couldn't have done it without the help of all these uh, parents and wonderful students and, of course, the coaching staff, uh, both of whom are, are alumni from the team. So uh, tonight, I would like to honor the girls' Sabre squad who successfully defended their district champion title uh, for the first time uh, becoming back-to-back -back champions in jail fencing history. Returning seniors Rihanna and Sophia had to face tough competition this year against competing schools Bernard's and Voorhees, and I held my breath for every 4-4 tiebreaker they suffered <laughs> through, uh, but ultimately performed admirably, rising to the occasion. Uh, we were joined this year by A-Strip and uh, first team All-State Hannah Tao, senior who only dropped uh, zero bouts <laughs> at the district championships. And collectively, we only lost three. So at these tournaments, uh, it's basically head to head against other fencers one on one in really tense settings. And uh, throughout that, we only lost three bouts, winning 18 out of 21 with an 86% win rate. Um, that was enough to secure the gold and also see this squad uh, take third place in the state overall uh, earlier that season. Lastly, this wouldn't have been possible without the support of the whole team and the substitutes, uh, Skyler and Haley really helped out with pit crew efforts during the tournament, um, taking statistics. And of course, our manager, Kavya, who's been instrumental through the growth and development of this program, through all the organization, logistics and equipment uh, managing um, to bring us to this point. Uh, congratulations to the 2023 Girls Sabre Squad. Whereas the varsity fencing girls Sabre team of Governor Livingston High School, located in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, consists of players. Oh. Read their names. Sure. Uh, Sophia Judica, Rihanna Ferdke, Hannah Tao, Skylar Brashnikova, Haley Reese, and manager Kavya Kasula. And whereas the team is coached by head coach Michael Wang, assistant coach Kevin Jow, and volunteer coach Elton Grossman. 
And whereas the Varsity Fencing Girls Sabre team of Governor Livingston High School earned the title of District 5 Girls Sabre Champion by defeating all seven other schools in the district, including Bernard's and Voorhees High School, by the score of 18 wins out of a total of 21 bouts on the February 12, 2023 in Montgomery High School. And whereas the team successfully defended their District 5 Sabre Championship title from last season, 2021-2022. And whereas the Highlanders completed the season with a record of eight wins, seven losses, and a statewide ranking of top eight in the state. And whereas the team saw each of its members contribute individually to the team during its championship run. And whereas the Berkeley Heights and Mountainside communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this team and its coaches. And now therefore be it resolved, the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the 2022-2023 Girls Fencing Sabre Squad and congratulate the student athletes and coaching staff on their outstanding championship season. And be it resolved that a signed and sealed copy of this resolution be framed and kept on display at Governor Livingston High School. Signed and sealed this the 27th day of April of the year 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, first of all, do not be alarmed because we're going to bring up some student athletes with NP on their chest. It's okay. Do not be alarmed. They are actually part of our co op ice hockey program with New Providence, which has been off the charts successful. So, finally, I'd like to bring up our head ice hockey coach, uh, Mr. Greg Jensen, up to the podium to recognize our 2023 state championship ice hockey team. Okay, no problem. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to thank uh, the Board of Education um, for this invitation, uh, the administration, um, and Ms. Clifton for um, all the support, uh, obviously, throughout the year. Um, we had, uh, obviously, a back-to-back -back state champions here. Um, this is my first year coaching the team, and um, obviously, there was a lot of expectation coming in. Um, and after the first practice, I knew, I knew we had a special group here. Uh, they battled hard night in and night out, um, won some big games. We lost a few, uh, heartbreakers, uh, but in the end we ended up, uh, overcoming, um, a, a higher technically seated team, but, um, one in four overtimes, the longest, uh, game in, uh, state championship history, uh, five to four. So, um, I want to, uh, thank my assistant coaches as well. Obviously they're not here, uh, Travis Delello, Matt Altamari and, and Carson Wallers, uh, for their help, uh, throughout the year as well. Um, and this group of uh, athletes here uh, did an amazing job this year. So thank you. Yeah. Whereas the varsity ice hockey team of Governor Livingston High School and New Providence High School, located in Berkeley Heights and New Providence, New Jersey, consist of players. Brian Kramer, Brandon Kakaro, Matt Wallen, Jordan Baum, Teddy Baum, Jackson Benward, Scott Capen, Owen Cook, Matt Costa, Colin DeCroy, Princess Delano, Daltrey Ferrigno, Kyle Foster, Brandon Fowlis, Quentin Gallagher, Anthony Labisi, Alec Novotny, Jeremy Sixnius, Ryan Sixnius, Jacob Wachtel, Carter Wallers, and manager Meredith O'Rourke. Whereas the team is coached by head coach Greg Jensen and assistant coach Matt Altamere and volunteer coaches Travis Delello and Carson Wallace. And whereas the varsity ice hockey team of Governor Livingston High School and New Providence High School earned the title of state champion by defeating Woodbridge, Woodbridge Colonia 
by the score of 5-4 on March 6th, 2023 at the Prudential Center. And whereas the Highlanders com completed the season with a record of 16 wins, five losses and four ties and a statewide ranking of 16th. And whereas the varsity ice hockey team of Governor Livingston High School and New Providence High School also won the New Jersey Inter Interscholastic Ice Hockey McInnes Division regular season championship. And whereas the team saw each of its members contrib contribute individually to the team during its championship run. And whereas the Berkeley Heights, Mountainside and New Providence communities are very proud of the accomplishments of this team and its coaches. And now they're for be it resolved, the Berkeley Heights Board of Education members applaud the 2022-2023 ice hockey team and congratulate the student athletes and coaching staff on their outstanding championship season. And be it resolved that a signed and sealed copy of this resolution be framed and kept on display at Governor Livingston High School. Signed and sealed this the 27th day of April of the year 2023. Going to get a nice picture out front. That's yeah. up to you. <laughs> I just very quickly, um, just a couple brief announcements. I want to thank, I know um, I, I heard there's an ice hockey game tonight. I think it's the Devils Rangers, something like that. So getting uh, these boys here tonight was uh, quite, a, quite a feat. So I appreciate it. Um, and then out to um, all of our parents and student athletes and everyone in the audience and the Board of Education. Thanks so much for your time tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Two last bit of announcements. Each team has a, a laminated copy of the resolution that you can, uh, that you'll be handed out. And there are championship t-shirts uh, outside from the Highlander Booster Club. So please stop by the table and pick yours up. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the time. So obviously we have a lot to celebrate with our athletics teams. I don't want to overshadow what's coming next. Ms. Mendenhall, do you want to introduce your team, your environmental club? Um, you could just, if you want to push it, you just have to push it there. I mean, we don't have a player. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So today I met with some members of the environmental club to discuss an energy action plan. I'm going to turn it over to Carter Shea so he can start his presentation. Welcome. Is the mic on? Yeah. Check one. Okay, speaking. All right. So, hi, I'm Carter Shea. Um, I'm a junior here at GL, and I'm president of the Environmental Club. And with me is... Hi, I'm Charlotte King. I'm a junior, and I'm also, and I'm the vice president of the Environmental Club. So, we're here today to talk to you about energy and what we can do to make our energy more sustainable and cost-effective. Um, so, we respectfully, on the be behalf of the GL Environmental Club, we asked Berkeley Heights Public Schools to investigate the possible financial savings from two climate positive actions, solar power generation and energy efficiency capital upgrades. So, before we jump into how we can make our use of energy more sustainable and cost effective, it's important to understand how our energy looks like now. So at Woodruff, they generate about 90% of their electricity by solar using a third of the roof space. Last year, they actually generated over 100% um, of their electricity, meaning they actually got paid by the power company as a net power producer. So that's really good. At GL over here, um, we use about 12 to 16% uh, of our energy coming from the solar panels on our roof, which takes up about an eighth of the space. 
At Mary Kay, Hughes, Mountain Park, and CMS, no solar has been installed yet. As a whole, we use about 2 million kilowatt hours of electricity per year, and it costs us hundreds of thousands of dollars. With the current system, we've saved about $80,000 since its installation in 2012. So now let's talk about some reasons why we should expand our solar energy. Yes, using solar energy is better for the environment as it is a 100% emissions-free process, but perhaps the biggest benefits are the cost savings it provides. In recent years, solar technology has greatly improved to become more practical and efficient to get the most electricity generation out of a set area. This means that with the, an expansion of our solar, we could possibly produce more than 60% of the electricity we use, saving over $50,000 a year. Multiply that by 10 years, and that's over $500,000. With huge budget savings, money can be shifted to other places in which it's needed, and this is crucial considering the state of our budget. This could also be a great learning opportunity to, to prepare all of our students for the future by teaching them about sustainability as outlined in the district sustainability policy. By installing solar, Berkeley Heights will be able to lead by example, not only as a model for other districts, but for our students who will see their school making a difference. With the rapidly growing industry of renewable energy, the US and the entire world, we need a workforce which is educated and qualified on these issues. And what better way to prepare all of our students than a physical demonstration of renewable resources being actively used at our schools. So why is now the right time to act? So the first reason is that solar installation has become much cheaper as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed this past August. According to the act, the government will take about 30% of the price of new solar installations for public infrastructure via tax credits. On top of this, the cost of solar energy generation has plummeted nearly 90% over the past 10 years, meaning it would take much less time to see savings on the energy bill. Plus, quite a few schools in New Jersey and across the nation have recently gone solar. In fact, New Jersey is second behind California for solar on schools. 12 districts in our Union County have solar, including us. So what does expanding our solar actually look like? Um, there are many local companies who offer solar installation on public buildings. I met with a few of them over Zoom in the past few months. One of these companies, Nautilus Solar, which is based down the road in Summit, uh, explained how easy it was and how simple the process was to switch our schools to solar. Most of these companies are vertically integrated, and that means that they deal with everything from the power purchase agreements or PPAs to surveying the roof strength to see if it can support the system of solar panels. There's no upfront cost associated, and therefore there's no cost to taxpayers or capital investments involved. So now that we've gone over the reasons why we believe our solar energy should be expanded, we should go over new, we should go over how solar energy actually works. So most solar energy systems are connected to the electricity grid rather than being self-contained. So that means that if it's cloudy outside, you're still gonna have power. These solar systems do not actually power the building, like I said, but instead they produce power and send it out directly to the grid. So that means that we could produce power here and it could, be end, up, it could end up being used by a house in Washington, DC. However much electricity is produced by these solar panels will be factored out of the energy usage bill by the power company, which is where the cost savings come in. The district's current power purchase agreement saves four cents per kilowatt hour and it expires in 2027. Now, four cents doesn't sound like a lot, but considering the hundreds of thousands of kilowatt hours it produces per year, that's a lot of money. To put this all into perspective, we should look at other nearby schools who have gone through this process. Montville Township and Asbury Park are each expected to save nearly $1 million over 15 years, and we can learn from them. Montclair has detailed information regarding their planning process available online. Now to finish off my spiel on solar, let's look at specific data surrounding our solar in our district. So the 2013 New Jersey Board of Public Utilities Energy Audit stated that solar could generate 30% of the electricity the schools use. But as solar panel efficiency has nearly doubled in the last decade, this means that it could be closer to 60%. So now we will be moving on to our second topic, which is LED lighting. New LED lighting can reduce our energy consumption and costs that the school must incur. 
According to the Generations Electrical Company, in June of 2017, GL can save nearly $10,000 a year on utility bills if LED lighting was installed in the hallways. Additionally, new motion detecting light switches can further cement these cost savings. I have received an LED light grant from BHEF of $500, which is a good start. However, it is not enough to enact any real change. We spoke to the electricians and they said that the smallest project would cost around $1,000. Therefore, we need more funding. In 2016, the lighting in all district gyms were updated with LED lights. This is expected to save GL $216,000 over 10 years and a $10,000 grant helped pay for this project. Although this is good progress, there are additional ways in which we can lower our costs, such as installing more LED lights. So what are the benefits of LED lights? They provide us with brighter lighting. There's no glass or mercury. So if the bulbs were to break, it would not be a safety hazard. They use less energy. They last longer. They mimic the stimulus provided by natural sunlight, which keeps us more awake. They increase productivity and performance and they are safer for our custodial staff since bulbs are replaced less often with no risk of mercury exposure. Our custodians are in favor of this project. So to conclude, through expanding our use of solar, the district can save thousands and potentially a million dollars over the next decade with minimal, if any, upfront investments. Through, although some funding for LED lights may be required, the long-term benefits for the school district will far outweigh any initial costs. We can save thousands of dollars on ut utility bills. We welcome your approval to move forward with our proposed endeavors. And now if you have any questions, you can ask us now. Do any of the board members have any questions for Carter? I do. Um, so can you go back to the... There was a slide. So you said currently our percentage of solar panel arrays on our building is about how? Uh, yeah, let me get that up. So um, there's two schools that have solar. Um, Woodruff produces most, if not all, of their electricity using solar. And at GL, we have some solar panels on our roof too. Um, but they only power about 12 to 16%. And those were installed about 10 years ago. Uh, I have a question about the replacement of the roofs at Woodruff. Would that interfere at all with the solar panels that are going to be going up? Um, since Woodruff already has the solar panels on them, um, I'm not sure if it's for the entire roof. I'm not entirely up to date on that. Um, but usually what they would do is they would take off the solar panels like temporarily and then replace the roof and then put them back on because they're not like permanently latched onto the roof. Do you Thank guys you. have any analysis of what might um, be able to be generated if we put them on Mary Kay Hughes and Mountain Park? Like yeah. any analysis? So um, we were talking about the whole district. We could generate about 60%, uh, maybe even more the electricity that we use um, and we could save over $50,000 a year um, with increased productivity of the solar panels and cheaper technology that number could possibly be even higher. Got it and then is there anything like we can quickly take out of the Montclair playbook? Is it? Um, they have a website on how um, they're going about their process it's on it's available on their district website um, what they used, I'm not entirely sure what company they used, but they went through a company that was vertically integrated, like I had said. So they cover everything, you know, like the board members don't have to go around um, running around searching for engineers who can survey the roof and then people who can own the solar panels as a power purchase agreement. Like that company handles everything. Got it. Thank you. Just a quick question on, on the LED front. Did you guys look at like what percentage? So I know we did the gyms, but what percentage we are, are not LED now versus what we, you know, what the opportunity is to upgrade? Um, I'm not entirely sure what our percentage is now, but I know that all the gyms have LED lights and some of the classrooms, um, but by far most of our classrooms and hallways and other rooms use fluorescent lighting, um, which is a lot less efficient and it's also more dangerous. 
Do any other board members have any questions? Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. I did talk to members of the environmental club today and um, talk to them about meeting with the finance and facilities committee, because uh, while we love to jump on projects, there is a lot of work that goes into scope and sequence and scope. of. So I told them as soon as we get through with budget, we will eventually extend an invitation for them to come and talk to the facilities committee about what's next and next steps. And now we will start on the budget presentation, the final budget hearing. All right, good evening, everyone. This is our final budget review. We had a budget review um, on March 13th, was it? So um, what we're going to do is kind of glide through the ones that we've already gone over. The Everyone's had access to the presentation for quite some time now. So there's no need for us to dig in deep for the stuff we've already dug into. So, um, I will get started. Uh, thank you very much the Board of Education, especially the Finance Committee. You've spent a lot of time with myself, uh, Ms. Cott, Dr. Greer, and Ms. Kopaz. So thank you very much for your time. We talked about this last time. We've been working on this since October, working with the administration, as well as the county and the board and the Finance Committee. And then you saw this last time as well, our enrollment, which is has decreased um, slightly but um, it is continuing to decrease as well. This is also not a new slide, the fiscal clip. Do you wanna talk about it? You want me to pull? Okay. All right, so fiscal cliff is basically when you your, your um, revenue growth is smaller than the growth of your expenses, which we know is a, an issue when it comes to any type of budget. And do you wanna talk about this? Okay, all right. So um, let me just see where I can put things. All right. So this slide is uh, just high level. And the top of the slide are items that we went over in the tentative budget. We discuss the increases in material revenues and the increases in material expenditures. What is new is at the bottom of this slide. And um, these are changes that have uh, significant changes that have occurred in the six weeks since we had the tentative budget hearing on March 13th. So, first and very importantly, the district's insurance brokers advised of a reduction in health premiums, medical benefits. I'm sorry, let's start with dental. Dental benefits went from a projected 8% increase to a 2.5% increase. Medical benefits went from a 13.5% projected increase to a 9.9% increase for OAP, EHP, and HSA plans, and went down to 11.7% increase for the traditional PPO and POS plans. So that's good news for staff and taxpayers who are paying less, but it did cause the district to lose the health care waiver of approximately $190,000 that was built into the tentative budget. So to offset that, the district is going to end up needing to use an additional roughly $42,000 worth of banked capital. So banked capital, bank cap is unused taxing authority from one of the prior three years. The um, also increases in revenues include the additional uh, activities fees. Uh, we will be raising the rates on activities and athletics fees by $50. And we have adjusted 
our um, interest income expectation uh, for $40,000. On the other side, uh, coming down, we have some equipment reductions to the tune of $269,000 that I will go through uh, on a different slide, as well as the use of our ESSER funds for $112,000 worth of items we were able to pull off of fund 11 and utilize these ARP ESSER funds. So what we have here is we were looking originally at a $1.6 million differential between uh, expenses and revenues. And we've now brought that down to just under a million dollars. So I don't know if you wanna do the slide or you'd like me to do this, but uh, the uh, center column demonstrates what we had discussed as reductions in staff related deductions for the tentative budget. The new reduction that is in the final budget is on the right-hand side. So whereas we originally were planning to restructure the administrative team and reduce uh, the salaries by $350,000, salaries are now being reduced by $133,000. Where the athletics budget was reduced by $150,000, it is now only being reduced by $41,000 where secretarial staff salaries were, re were planned to be reduced by $133,000, they are being reduced by $156,000. The reduction in elementary help staff was anticipated to be $98,000. Now they are not being reduced at all. The reduction in teaching staff cost was estimated at $656,000. And the final budget includes a reduction of $554,000. The related benefit savings um, are a wash, but there are additional savings that I will talk about in uh, the detailed slides. No, I just need a bigger one. So I'm gonna go through the itemized line changes from the tentative budget, as well as what was in the advertised budget. So the advertised budget is on our website. It was also published in the uh, Courier uh, News on the 21st. So if you're following along in either one of these, we're gonna go by the um, line accounts and talk about what changed. So regarding kindergarten salaries, from the tentative budget, <clears throat> we're increasing this line $138,438. The final budget line is listed there. The net, um, the result is a net of reinstating help teachers, the resigna resignation of a teacher for which a quarter of that person's salary is accounted on this line, and the reinstatement of one kindergarten teacher. For grades one through five, the change from tentative is an increase of $82,686. This is a result, a net result of reinstating all the help teachers, the resignation of uh, a teacher of which 0.75% of their salary is accounted for here, and the res, res oh, I'm sorry, and reinstating two teachers on this line. For grades six through eight salaries of teachers, the net reduction from tentative is $15,319. This includes reinstating full substitute and extra period stipends and the reduction of one teacher. Grades nine through 12 teacher salaries, this line is increasing by $73,565. This includes reinstating full substitute costs, reinstating full extra period stipends, reinstating the full amount of curriculum writing, and the retirement of two teachers, and the re, uh, reinstatement of one teacher. For regular programs purchase technical services, this is an ARP item. So 
$59 is being reduced from this line and instead our ESSER funds will be used to purchase the iReady program. The regular program instructions, other purchase services is being reduced by $1,599. This includes the reduced, uh, reduced costs for book binding and printing as well as microscope repairs. Regular program instruction general supplies is being reduced by $6,870. This includes the removal of a camera, SAT and ACT workbooks for a course that will not run, an English two novel, removal of graphing calculators, and a general reduction in supply requests. The instructional textbook line is being reduced by $37,779. Um, the, primarily, the, we are using ARP ESSER funds to purchase a word study program, as well as leveled literacy intervention. There's also a reduction in textbook replacements. Other salaries, auditory impairment is a secretarial resignation of which um, roughly a third of this individual salary is allocated to this cost center. Yeah, I lost something, it's okay. The salaries of teachers for autism is going up by $75,773. This is the reinstatement of one elementary special ed teacher. General supplies autism, is reduced by $2,000. We were advised that current year IDA funds could be used to purchase an item of equipment that was uh, in the proposed budget. For, oh, sorry about that. Got it. For School-sponsored co-curricular and extracurricular activities, supplies, and materials. Julie, can you put it in that presentation mode? Yeah, can you make it bigger? Oh, no, sorry. Yes, I could. Thank you. You're welcome. And can I make that a little bigger? The uh, school-sponsored co-curricular, extracurricular activity supplies and materials being reduced by $10,000 to, uh, and there is a postponement of the purchase of band uniforms. In uh, school-sponsored athletics, there is the reinstatement of coaching stipends uh, in the amount of $137,932. For school-sponsored athletic supplies and materials, there is a reduction of $29,000, um, a, a reduction of uniforms and equipment costs. For purchase professional educational services for speech, OTPT and related services, a reduction of $1,500 for support services. For guidance salaries of secretarial assistants and assistants, an increase of $39,022 for the reinstatement of one 10-month secretary. Uh, other guidance purchase services, a reduction of $1,000 in the printing costs for the eighth grade course selections. Those will now be done electronically. The child study team, other professional staff is an increase of $91,125. It's a reinstatement of one special ed professional. The child study team purchase services is being reduced by $3,000 uh, for professional development. Improvement of instructional services, salaries of supervisors is being incre increased by $185,752 for the reinstatement of one supervisor. The improvement of instructional- really? I'm you advance. Oh, yeah, so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. The <clears throat> improvement of instruction, 
salaries for clerical and administrative assistant staff is a reduction of $43,000. And here is the other portion of the uh, individual salary that we, I spoke about earlier. This person resigned. Uh, media services library salaries, there is a retirement of one media specialist in the amount of 114927 Purchase professional and technical services are a reduction of $1,000 in online subscriptions. Instructional staff training, purchase professional educational services is a reduction of $38,000. Uh, and the removal of the learning um, living literacy network. Administrative infotech salaries is increasing by $31,347, which is the reinstatement of the full supervisor salary. The un unallocated benefits for health benefits is being reduced by a total of 250,944. That includes uh, a dental decrease of 21,712, a medical premium decrease of 174,305 and associated benefit savings from staff uh, that for positions that will not be filled in the amount of uh, $54,927. Uh, equipment for elementaries, <clears throat> there is the removal of one riding lawnmower in the amount of $20,000. Equipment for the middle school, the removal of bleachers for the CMS Blue Gym in the amount of $100,000. Equipment at the high school, reduction of $4,500 for a laser cutter engraver. The equipment for administrative information technology is being reduced by $144,345. Now we are, since there was a spending freeze put in place February 15th, uh, we were able to calculate by roughly April 15th that we had sufficient funds to now purchase these Chromebooks in the current school year. So by shifting that payment to the current year, we're able to pull $144,000 off of the, the forward year budget. Construction services are a net increase of $20,250, and that involves two capital projects. Oh, one is the CMS roof, when the architect and engineer went back up on the roof, they realized that the band area that they had originally uh, thought needed to be repaired or re section replaced had been repaired about three or four years ago. And that what really needed care was two adjacent sections to the band area. And that was an increase of 119,750. And on the other side of this, the Mary Kay retaining wall, that price estimate came down $99,500. For the local tax levy, <coughs> the change from tentative is a reduction of $147,952. That net change, again, is based on the healthcare uh, adjustment, losing the healthcare adjustment, and adding in additional amounts of banked cap. This budget utilizes a total of $52,048 in banked cap. The next line uh, is also a revenue line, the unrestricted miscellaneous revenues, the, the increase of $86,750, includes the increased athletic participation fees and increased projection on interest revenue. And <coughs> the last uh, item is a, an additional withdrawal from capital reserve to offset that net change in the CMS roof and retaining wall for an increase of $20,250. Uh, Mary Beth? Good evening, everyone. I just briefly wanted to talk about the programs that will continue to thrive if this budget is passed this evening, and that is in the elementary world. We'll continue to have our heights HEIGHTS stands for having each individual gain higher level thinking skills, our HEIGHTS STEAM and gifted and talented programs, and the staff member who runs those programs. Um, Ms. Codd already discussed iReady, which is our individualized adaptive learning platform. Students can use it not only in school, but are also can use it at home and even during summer months to accelerate learning. 
um, additional digital or digital learning platforms that are used in the classroom, such as RAS Kids and Brain, Brain Pop. Professional development will continue to support our staff and best practice instruction across all content areas. Um, with the reintroduction of all our help teachers, we can run our full What I Need programs. That's for both strategic and in intensive instruction for our students in reading, writing, and mathematics. We'll continue to have instructional support from our reading specialists and our math interventionists. Our preschool and our full day pro kindergarten programs will continue to thrive and we will have updated curriculum development and learning resources to support our New Jersey student learning standards in all of our content areas. Dr. Greer. Thank you, Mrs. Kopaz. Good evening, everybody. Uh, and just to continue sharing for our secondary programs that will continue to thrive as well. Uh, we will continue to update our curriculum uh, development, looking at our new cybersecurity course that I know everyone is very excited about that has been approved to be written for the summer, um, a new retail and hospitality experience course that you may hear a little bit more about this evening. If you remember, Mr. Mora and Mrs. Uh, Gardner uh, presented at the end of last summer, uh, beginning of this year, a baking and culinary experiences course for our students with special needs. Um, there is a new course that we are looking to write as well, retail and hospitality experience as part of a cohort. And we are are excited about that program as well. Um, and just uh, aligning our curriculum with our updates in line with our five-year cycle. Um, we're also looking to continue to incorporate interdisciplinary learning activities through uh, New Jersey Student Learning Standards 8 and 9, uh, Standard 8, Computer Science Design Thinking, and Standard 9, Career Readiness, Life Literacies, and Key Skills. What's exciting about Standard 9 is what our students need to know and do to be successful in all areas of life as well. Uh, you can see that we're going to continue our upgrades to Wi-Fi, the network, and switches at the middle school. Um, our switches handle all of the traffic among the devices in our schools. And as you know, more people have more devices, uh, puts a lot of stress on that. So we're excited to be able to uh, continue those upgrades. Uh, and as you see here as well, our Chromebooks in grades 9 through 12, continuing to update. All of our new devices contain Google licenses that allow us to push security updates, which is a very important part of what we do, customizations, and ensure that they can be used for state assessments. And as you know, our New Jersey student learning assessments are beginning on Monday in our elementary schools and will continue through uh, the month of May. So this uh, <clears throat> total percent, the total proposed school budget for 2023-2024 is $62,806,101, which includes proposed capital projects. I did go through these expense categories in detail at the March meeting, uh, March 13th meeting, so I will not do so again. Uh, just note that the values in purple indicate expense categories that have changed from the advertised budget. This is a representation uh, that you have seen uh, it previously about salaries and benefits remaining at just over 80% of your total current expenses. Similarly, the sources of revenue in purple font are those that change from the advertised budget. And that is the visual representation. So the district is including several capital projects in the new budget year. Funds will be taken out of capital reserve account and will have no impact on the tax levy. The capital reserve account is where money is specifically set aside to support the district's long range facilities plan. The two items in purple are which, what I discussed previously, uh, two sections of Columbia roof being done and a smaller value placed on uh, removing and replacing the retaining wall for a total of $1,578,750 coming out of capital reserve. <clears throat> So we have <clears throat> the district is not eligible for an enrollment adjustment and is no longer eligible for health care cost adjustment. The 2% tax levy increase over the 2022-2023 budget is $897,929. The district currently has access to over $344,000 of banked cap 
which represents unused taxing authority. To support all the items included in this budget, a total of $52,048 of banked cap is being utilized. Therefore, the total change to the tax levy is $949,977, which equates to a 2.12% tax increase. For the average homeowner having an assessed value of $316,742, this will equate to an additional $207.62 $207 per year, or $17.30 per month. Or for each $100,000 of assessed value, the tax impact is about $5.40 per month. This graph provides a historical look at the tax levy over the past 11 years. Over the course of that time, the district's average annual increase has been 2.37%. Thank you. So I'm going to, we'll take questions from the board. Please, please um, raise your hand when you would like to ask a question. So, Ditti. So question for Dr. Warley um, and also uh, Ms. Kopas and Dr. Greer. We heard a lot of numbers. We heard the puts and takes, we get that. What is the headline of this budget in terms of the students? What are they not going to get that is in place today. We heard good stuff about programs that are going to thrive. What is being taken away? The students will not feel an impact by this budget as it stands. They still have programs. They still have people. They will not feel an impact. So I guess what is, we heard a lot of teachers coming in, teachers going out. My question is, what is being taken away? I think we've gone through what's being taken away. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, that, that was a lot of detail, but if you were to take the real world example of here's a program that will not be offered because of X, Y, Z reasons, I'm trying to get a better feel for it. I think when we reviewed this the last time, there were two supervisors uh, being taken out or yes. Now there's just one being taken out. I'm trying to get a better understanding of what is that one person or one role being taken out? What is being taken out? What is being impacted? I think in the grand scheme of things, if you notice on the next agenda item is the, re, the reorg has a director of STEAM, um, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, which will what I did is I did a research based on like districts who are, hopefully we will get to this point, going out to a referendum to modernize our libraries, make them actual media STEM, STEAM labs. So I looked at New Providence, Milburn, multiple other districts, and they have this role in there. So this will encompass the science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics, if that's what you're asking. Yes, I see that on the on the agenda. I'm just trying to understand what are we, I guess, what's the what's the impact of the role? Because I, I can't tell what the detail that was presented. I don't understand what you're asking. Like, I, I, I mean, we're not impacting as far as the actual students, what they're receiving, they will not feel an impact if that is what you're asking. That is definitely okay. one of my questions. Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. Couple of quick things. You did mention, uh, Mrs. Cott, uh, I think it's 2.12% in the final budget based on increase uh, in the tax levy based on the average home. Is that correct? That's accurate, yes. My recollection is for the tentative budget, it was 2.445% increase. 2.45, yes. And so it's <laughs> now gone down to 2.12%. Correct. So it's a decrease. It is. I just want to make sure. The other thing, my, my other question might be for either Dr. Varley or Ms. Kopas. 
I keep hearing almost the first time it sounded like reinstituting health teachers. You're saying help teachers. Can can someone just, it's great they're being re reinstituted, particularly at early education. I'm a big fan of early education support. Can you tell us what a help teacher does? I know what a health teacher does. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are very fortunate in the district to have certified staff members, which we call help teachers, that help to run our programs in the elementary schools. So when you hear us talking about a program such as the Win What I Need program, there are cycles where students go through and get exactly what they need. So if there are children that may, may, may possibly need extra support in certain standards, or certain content areas, or students who need enrichment in certain areas, or if there are children who might have particular gifts in areas, we want to offer them many offerings. So we have these cycle courses, and they're taught by certified teachers, and they help to run our really our entire program, not just our WIN program, but they also step in in many other avenues, whether it's to cover a class or sometimes even when we need support in possibly at recess or during lunch, but they are extremely important support staff that help our classroom, uh, both gen ed and special education teachers. But it's important to note that they are certified teachers. They're not just instructional aides, but certified teachers to support all of our program in the elementary schools. So it was a real advantage to be able to get them back in. Thank you for the question. Um, oh, sorry, Tom, go ahead. I, I was just wondering about these uh, coaching stipends, 137,932. How many coaches are involved in that? I, I don't have the number. So to be clear, what happened in the process of doing the tentative budget, certain amount of dollar values had to be cut out of the budget. While we awaited um, department heads and principals to provide us with actual names or actual items that they wanted to remove. Some of that could not be done in time for the tentative budget. Therefore, I had to take uh, items out that we did maybe did not necessarily mean were going to go away permanently, but we had to take them out in order to make that allocation. So we gave uh, Ann Clifton the directive to uh, shrink her budget by $150,000. Uh, when we, we were unable to get a level of detail by the tentative date, I had to pull $150,000 out of the coaching line. So now we are reinstating it because those people are going to be employed and do need to be paid. So that actually sounds like, uh, let's see, 137 from 150. It sounds like uh, there's two coaching stipends. I don't, I don't know offhand. Basically, two, I think two went away. Is that right? Two went away. I think they're currently not filled. Okay. Um, and that was a decision that um, Ms. Clifton made. And has the finance committee reviewed all of this and approved of it? The finance committee was okay with all of it. The line item changes? Yeah. Yes. Each line item was reviewed in detail at the last finance committee meeting on the 20th. Okay. And... So there's ads and there's deletions. Tom, the, the finance committee did meet. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so if you take all of the additions and all of the deletions, I think it comes out to about, I, I did this, and it's a $21,000 reduction. 42, I believe. 42? Okay, I'll have to talk to Mr. Excel so about that. So that would be the difference in the total. Uh, we originally had 62 million 901 and yeah. something. Okay. Uh, maybe it was 553. Don't hold me to that. And so okay. now you're at 62 million. Um, the heck was the number? All right. So you say 42,000. Okay. 62, 860, 101. And uh, do we have a cost for the courtesy busing? How much is that? A pardon? That how much do we spend on the courtesy busing? As I've mentioned before, we do not have a breakdown of just courtesy bussers because they are mixed in with all other students, mandated transporters, 
uh, subscription bussers, and the courtesy riders. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Pam. So I think the only one that I haven't uh, gotten clarified, and maybe it's just a silly question, but the CMS, the Blue Gym uh, bleachers, we were going to replace bleachers in the Blue Gym, and we're not going to do that this year, do you know? Yes. Yes. So the new principal had asked to replace those bleachers. Um, my understanding is, and don't hold me to the exact language of this, but they have been refurbished. There has been new stoppers put on them to enhance safety and so forth. So in the grand scheme of what we were looking at in this budget, that could be pushed a year or two. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted to thank you, Julie. I, I know this budget process has been a really long one for uh, all of us, but for you, it's been impossible. So I really want to thank you. And when you see the breakdown of little, little numbers and looking at every item, I know you guys too, you looked at every single item we could to move it to an SR fund or whatever we could do. So I really do want to thank you. I know it's a lot of work. And so I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. Just uh, one quick one for me. Sure. Um, Dr. Farrell, you, you were touching on, on STEAM, STEM. I, I don't know if, if this is for Dr. Greer or Mary Beth, uh, just in terms of uh, maybe the vision for, for where we hope to go with, with STEM, STEAM. Um, uh, obviously, the, the concept isn't new, but um, as it relates to practical skills and job skills and opportunities for, for students at all levels, I'd, I'd love to sort of hear, you know, where we hope to go at a, at a high level. Well, um, I can't answer that right now, but we are planning on having a brief presentation June 5th about for our kind of action plan guidance for STEAM and STEM, especially if we get this referendum going that we were going to do in 2020. And if you've been to the media centers, you know, they look like the ones that, well, I, I can date myself that I went to school in. So um, we would like to have that referendum go through so we can remodel our media centers. Yeah. Um, Julie, I would just like to just uh, go back to the courtesy busing. We are going to look into that and the breakdown for next year and, and try to sort out those numbers. Absolutely. So the uh, when the committee met on the 20th, uh, we discussed uh, various uh, items uh, and, and courses of attack. Uh, one primary one and the most important really is to do a survey of the parents because until we know who is willing to uh, either drive their child or pay for subscription busing, or a little bit locked up on trying to make changes to contracts and things of that nature, uh, which take some advanced timing. So we will absolutely have that uh, start looking at it. And I know we're going to probably discuss it again at our May meeting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I would also like to just talk to my uh, fellow board members. Um, as you are, I am all very invested in our community. This is, you know, our home. Uh, the third generation of my family is now currently attending Berkeley Heights schools. Change is very difficult, especially when you're intimately involved in a change that is in progress. And I look around our town and I see changes happening all over. And I know that there's going to be greater changes coming and occurring soon in our town and within our schools, possibly with an increase because of the building. In recent months, I've been hearing about technological advances in artificial intelligence, the chat GPT, uh, Microsoft Edge Atom, and Google Bard, and I've even tried it myself with surprising surprising results. And I, I've wondered what is going to be this educational impact and how are our students going to be using it? And I would like to ha have the conversation of preparing our students from pre-K all the way through graduation for these challenges of navigating these new advances. Um, next, I'd like to see our district not only discuss these new technologies, but I'd like to see them applied going forward in our curricula and teaching our students starting at the early learning centers to evaluate information. Is this a photograph or is it a digital image? Is this a piece of art or music created by a human artist or is this a, in the style of? Is this news article information valid or is it inspired to create a bias? Um, 
and how do we appropriately use these new tools and technologies in our schools and how do we prepare our district students for the jobs that haven't even yet been considered and I, I believe that we are at a crossroads here in our district in Berkeley Heights and I'd like to see our district commit to uh, the science, techn technology, engineering, practical arts and math as an interdisciplinary endeavor from pre-K to graduation. And I know our elementary science programs already have an engineering component and a phenomena initiation. And I'd like to see this expanded to have you uh, community resources and relying on our parents, you know, jobs that they may have in different areas that we can um, tap as a resource. Um, finally, I, I understand that the work required for the positions in science and math coordination nine through 12 is sizable. And I understand that future revisions to positions may need to be made as the work involved as we go forward becomes more apparent. We can show a district commitment and an emphasis in interdisciplinary curricula relating to our existing and our emerging technologies and pre-K through graduation for all our students. And we can advance student achievement through this. And to conclude, I know that negotiations and budgets are difficult. I have had 12 years of negotiation experience within this district between staff and administration. And as a new board member, I, I have to look at a bigger picture. I'm not on the negotiations, I'm not in the personnel decisions, or I'm not involved on the finances or facilities and creating a budget, but I'm looking at this now, what you presented, Ms. Cott, and you know, teaching staff and administration staff have had losses and they've had reinstatements through this process. And I feel I am charged with guiding and approving or disapproving directions of the district uh, for the benefit of our students' achievement. And it's a difficult assignment, but I, I believe that it is worth doing. And I, I thank you for, for listening and I want to encourage conversations in this. And I'm looking ahead to advancing our students here in Berkeley Heights in a, in a, in a kind of a different direction. Thank you, Gail. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. And Julie, thank you very much for all the hard work you've put into the budget. You're thank welcome. You. When I say she's been working almost 24-7, I really um, have to give her kudos for all the hard work she's been doing on this budget. Okay, I would uh, like to move to the public comment on the final budget. This is just for the budget. Um, so let me read. During this portion of the meeting, district residents and staff are invited to address the board of education on the final budget only. The board requests that individuals state their name and town of residence or school of attendance for the record. The specific action items they are commenting on and ask that all remarks be, be directed to the board president or designee, not to individual members or staff. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking, specifically comments regarding personnel matters are discouraged and cannot be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the law of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. If a matter concerning a district staff member is of interest or concern to a resident, the matter should be referred to responsible building principal, superintendent of schools, or the board of education, either by telephone, letter, or email. Although the board may not respond to items raised during the public forum, all public comments will be considered. Please note if any member of the public becomes disrupted during the meeting, the board president may terminate the participant's statement. Continued disruptions may result in removal from the meeting or adjournment of the meeting. 
Each speaker's statement will be limited to three minutes in duration. Please come to the podium if you'd like to address the board. Is there a microphone there? Yeah, please. Yes, can you hear me? Okay. Hi, I'm Laura Mendenhall, and uh, I teach environmental science here at Yale. Thank you for listening to my students earlier. If you have questions about the numbers that I handed out, I can absolutely answer them at another time. But I'm here to actually ask you to keep both uh, math and science supervisors. Um, as a science teacher, I have felt wonderfully supported by the science supervisor. He has made, and I've now had two since I've been here. This is my ninth year. Um, James Finley and I started here together, and when I got here, there was one environmental science class, and now we have seven every year, and we have an AP program, and my first year, I said, well, where's the AP program, and he said, well, I don't know, let's find out, and so we built it, and I could not have done that without James Finley, and now we have this class that, um, students who would not have taken a fourth year of science are taking, and students would maybe not feel comfortable taking an AP science course like AP chemistry are taking environmental science with me. And I feel that that's a really important subject. So um, they have, he has made me a better teacher. It also allows us to do innovative programs. So um, Mr. Dagunas has only been here for, I'm not even sure, four months. And he and I are doing something very exciting after the AP exam. We are 160 students, all, we have eight uh, AP courses and we're working together to do a client symposium, something that is run at the UN and the World Bank and corporations and Congress. And we are gonna run four different symposiums where students come in and they look at the problems and they try to solve them themselves and then they have to negotiate and do backroom deals. And this is not something that I could do by myself. This is something that I need support to do. And that is what the science supervisor offers. And I think that I agree very much that science and math are the way forward and we need two people to support those programs. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your thanks. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Check, check. Hi, Steve. Hello, Mike. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Hess. I'm a check, math check. teacher here at the high school. Um, it's my 20th year. And I wanted to echo a lot of what Laura said, that um, I think we all agree that math and science are very important to the future of all of the kids in Berkeley Heights and entire country. And it's hard for me to see how limiting or shrinking from two supervisors in that area to one director is somehow going to give us more focus in that area. And both the people that we have now have really been tremendous assets, I think, to the district. You know, she mentioned that the environmental science program went from zero to seven during the last nine years. When I started teaching AP statistics, we had two sections, sometimes one, in the first couple of years. You know, now we have five. Drew Ziobro has been very fundamental to that. We looked at you know, and that's a course that I think is very much a 21st century growing need is data analytics. But one of the things that really made that happen is we looked at the requirements. We said, you know, look at the prerequisites we have now. We could have a lot more kids taking this if we changed the approach and pushed it throughout the district and made it, done some marketing. So he's been really helpful to me um, and the whole district to make that program grow. Uh, he also started the robotics and has been a major technology lead for us. And we've got great IT people for the district, but he's also been really a math IT person for us for years, pushing us to use more technology in the classroom. Um, I can't see how one person is gonna provide us the leadership we need. And a, a last point, you know, we just lost um, Steve Chiroker, we're losing, he's retiring at the end of the year. He's teaching our top level computer science and AP calculus courses. That's a huge need to train someone or to hire someone to fill that position. Having a senior math supervisor who's taught math and knows the staff and all of our um, abilities well to help figure out how to mentor a new person in that, it's gonna be really vital. That's a huge need for someone that's also new to the district and trying to supervise science and engineering and arts and everything else at the same time. So I hope we'll 
strongly consider that part of the proposal and look at the assets we have and use them. And actually, the last point, the day after a month ago was announced that these people were losing their jobs, I sat in a meeting with Laura and Dennis for an hour, and we talked about this program that we're doing the, with uh, the AP students right after the AP tests. And Dennis was all in and so enthusiastic, you would never have thought that he just found out he's probably losing his job. So he's, he's still so committed, and I really applaud that and thank them for their support. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for your comments. Thank you. My name is Margie Loya, and I have a statement to make. Um, I've been recommended by Dr. Uh, Varley to uh, be removed from the uh, substitute teacher uh, roster for not only GL, but the Berkeley Heights uh, district. And I wanna address that. Um, again, my name is Margie Loya and thank you for letting me speak. I have been teaching for over 15 years, including many as a special ed teacher. I hold a master's degree in education and I am dual certified in Orton Gillingham reading and math. For the past four years, I have worked three to four days a week as a substitute teacher at Governor Livingston High School. On March 24th, 2023, I received a letter from Dr. Varley indicating a recommendation to be made at this board that I be removed as a substitute teacher on the roster. The letter referenced removing an item from students' hands, escalating uh, incidents with students and teaching inappropriate words in Italian. On April 14th, to prepare for this meeting, I requested all details concerning the supposed issue and the supposed escalation issue from Ms. Diane Azalone, Dr. Varley's assistant. To date, I have not received any response. I was not present when any students complaints about me were made to GL. I was never asked by administration at GL to meet with them and the students making complaints to discuss what had or had not happened. I do recall taking a, a cell phone from a male student as I observed what appeared to be a gambling act that he was using in my classroom. When assigned to hall monitoring, I recall several girls sitting on the floor of the restroom eating and socializing. I requested that they leave and ushered them out of the bathroom. When teaching a cast class, a student shouted dickhead at me and I immediately called an administrator to have this student removed. I was not afforded the opportunity to discuss any of the above incidents with the complaining students in the presence of a GL administrator. No facts were established and no teaching uh, moments were explored. While I may only be a substitute teacher at GL, I have always tried to be a professional student um, with teacher learning and basic discipline among my foremost concerns. I have never been a school day babysitter, just taking attendance and trying to make sure nothing goes wrong. During my four years at GL, my work to build trust and rapport with students has taken place while supporting them in after school hours on my own time in extracurricular activities. Some parents and students are here tonight to support me. Can, can you please finish up? I'm trying. Okay. Um, you three minutes. And I also made copies for the board, um, which I th only thought there were 10 of you. And I have a student petition with over 100 student signatures. Um, I'll hand that out. But again, I didn't know there were 15 of you. So I'll be happy to mail them to you. So um, thank you. There's 10 copies, okay? So again, Come, thank you for your comments. Are here to support me. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Um, just to remind everybody that this public session is for the budget only, this public session. 
You talking about the budget? I would like to speak on her behalf. You you will get a chance, but this this actual section is just for the for the budget for people to talk. You will get a chance, I promise. Anybody else have any comments on the budget? I'd just like to ask for a clarification, budget alone or agenda items? This particular comment section is for the budget only. This, we will, will be, yes, for, yes. Okay, this particular one is just for budget. Anybody else want to talk about the budget? Budget? Yeah, okay. It's on the budget. Okay, sure. Good evening. My name is Drew Ziobro, and I'm the supervisor of mathematics and practical arts. I support mathematics teachers, family consumer science teachers, business teachers, tech ed teachers, industrial art teachers, and computer science teachers. I'm here speaking to you tonight to thank you for the opportunity to work in this district. Over my tenure in the district, I've helped to move forward a STEAM Academy program in collaboration with the science supervisor, building principals, and the prior superintendent. This has helped to increase opportunities for our students to gain recognition for their advancement in our STEAM program at Governor Livingston High School. This year, there will be 10 students graduating with a STEAM Academy endorsement. They are currently working on their culminating projects, and I look forward to seeing the great ideas they've created. When I first arrived at Berkeley Heights, I worked with students and teachers to create the GL Highlanders robotics team. I've had the opportunity to mentor and collaborate with the team over the years. This year, it was really great to see the students leading the program by creating additional outreach events at the elementary schools and middle school. These students have become true STEAM leaders in our district, and I'd like to thank them. Tonight, there is a resolution to eliminate two supervisor positions and create one director position. I was informed of this decision 2.30 Monday afternoon. When I asked about the development process to create this position and who was involved, I was told by Dr. Varley that this reorganization was the product of her and the personnel committee. She also informed me that Dr. Greer and Mary Beth Kopas were both present at the meeting, but she commented that they did not contribute to this reorganization plan. When I asked for a job description for the, this position, Dr. Varley printed it out and handed it to me. I have ha since had the opportunity to review that job description and compare it to my current job. When I look over the new job description, I can see the addition of science being added as a new responsibility to the position, as well as the overseeing of fine arts curriculums, which would be led by the assistant principals in each building. I was unable to identify anything in the job description that I believe would require a certification above a supervisor. When I asked Dr. Varley to explain why she believed this director position would benefit the district, she had stated that she was looking to advance STEM in our district and believed that be because other districts had directors of STEAM, we needed to have a director of STEAM. Since that meeting, I have gone back and looked over the 20 schools on our dashboard, and of the 20 districts in our dashboard, only three of those districts have director level positions that are responsible for STEAM. 15 have supervisors, two have coaches or department chairs. I ask you to vote no on this agenda item tonight. I believe that we can do much better as a district when we employ a collaborative process that involves all stakeholders. Between our administrators, teachers, and students and community, I believe together we can create a world-class district. When I worked at Industry in Crayola, I learned the secret to innovative solutions is collaboration. When I asked Dr. Varley in the meeting if this cost savings could be done by eliminating one supervisor and redistributing the responsibilities, she said, I don't know. I ask you to look at this resolution and ask, what about this position requires it to be a director versus supervisor? Can we do better? I feel like I have contributed to the advancement of the STEAM program in the district, and I can't help but wonder why the decision is being made to create the position that Dr. Varley said I could not be considered for as a result of the certification requirement. I ask you to vote no on this resolution and open up a more collaborative process, challenge the administration to go back, look at the reorganization with all stakeholders. We can do better. I want to thank you for the opportunity to work here at Berkeley Heights. I truly enjoyed working with the amazing administrators to create new programs and opportunities for students. And I believe working together as a team, we can accomplish so much more. Thank you for your comments. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rob Nixon. I am the principal of Governor Livingston High School and the president of the Berkeley Heights Administrators Association. 
I'd like to start off and thank Dr. Barley, Ms. Cott, and the board for inviting myself and Mrs. Nardi to attend a recent personnel committee meeting. We were able to share alternative ideas for district cost savings that we believed would have less impact on student achievement. That meeting, we shared over $500,000 worth of alternative cost savings. While we are disappointed that the board has decided to move in the direction that is posted on the agenda tonight, we appreciate the opportunity for collaboration. Before you make your decision regarding the administrative reorganization this evening, I'd like to call your attention to what is at the very center of the district's strategic plan, student achievement. The purpose of having a strategic plan is to provide direction and guide decisions that you make for the growth of our district. We have many questions that we would like to hear your thoughts or answers to. If student achievement is really at the heart of the strategic plan, how could you approve a recommendation eliminating two supervisors' positions when both of these supervisors oversee critical tested areas? It would appear through this, this, through this agenda tonight that the board is choosing to support positions through this budget that are the furthest removed from student achievement, positions that have only been added over the past two years. We would like to know why you would choose to do that. Why are those positions more valued than a supervisor's when that role has a direct impact on student achievement? Are your priorities, are your priorities centered and focused on student achievement? Approving this plan would unfortunately demonstrate otherwise. Before voting this evening, we would like to ask, do you have acceptable answers as to who will be handling all of the responsibilities of the eliminated supervisor? Such as who will be handling the 31 observations and 26 evaluations in addition to their own? Are you confident in knowing who will review student growth objectives, help create professional development plans, or assist in critical curriculum matters? How successful can this new director be having to do the work of two administrators? Do you feel comfortable moving forward, supporting a plan that not only eliminates the math supervisor position, but also makes the tenured administrator currently in this role unable to be considered for the director position due to certification? Are you doing the right thing for the development of our math program? At our last data dashboard presentation, GL ranked 16th out of the 20 comparable high schools in the math passing rate considered for graduation. Based upon last year's NJGPA testing, which is the new graduation proficiency assessment taken by all 11th grade students, we ranked, the, we ranked 10th on that dashboard. Are you willing to make a decision that will undoubtedly hurt that progress? Given that there are alternative budget items that can be cut and in consideration of the negative impact to student achievement that this resolution could have, the Berkeley Heights Administrators Association once again would like to urge you to vote against the plan that's on tonight's agenda for administrative reorganization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any more? Comments on budget? Um, it looks like what I want to say is right in line with what is being sent. So I'm going to go ahead and talk now. Shauna Williams, Berkeley Heights. Uh, my first question is rhetorical. Okay. What do you think parents want from this district? If you came up with any answer other than for their children to receive the best education possible, then that's a problem. And what does best education look like? Studies, papers, experts say that the number one most important thing is effective teachers. And at the last meeting, you had teachers show up in a way I've never seen before. They came to tell you that they need their supervisors. Okay. You, at least the majority of you, voted to remove the resolution to abolish the supervisory positions. And you listened to those who are the number one most important component in our schools. They are the ones who are in the best position to determine what should be done in this instance. They spoke with emotion, they gave you examples, and with near universal support for their specific supervisors. And what is the result now? Item D on the agenda. Reorganization of the administrative team. And nice touch, by the way, calling them administrative team. Um, this is the exact same thing that the teachers came out in droves to speak out against, but on a smaller scale. Uh, this question is not rhetorical. Who exactly put this forth? I think we see now that it was Dr. Barley. Uh, for those at home who have not looked at the agenda, item D creates a director position and abolishes the supervisor of math and technology education and the supervisor of science and art. 
Um, maybe it's weirdly reassuring that the board doesn't seem to give any more consideration to teachers than they do to parents, but quite honestly, I think it's pathetic. So different note, on behalf of the marching band quarter madams, you are welcome. Uh, it appears that the repair that we have been doing on the band uniforms will allow the district to delay the purchase of $10,000 worth of uniforms. And I'm not saying this as a brag, I'm saying it as a challenge. You should each challenge yourselves to come up with solutions. The teachers told you what they need and it's horrifying to me that you're throwing it back in their faces, okay? Stop turning a blind eye to the needs of those who've elected you guys to represent them. Stop giving the blank check of approval to every recommendation made by the superintendent and the business administrator. I think right now, the best thing you could actually do is a vote of no confidence for the supervisor and non-renewal of the contract for the business administrator. That's what's gonna help our schools at this point. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi everyone. Um, I know I don't really speak during the public citizens hearing, but I thought it was really important for me to come up today and sort of share a student perspective about the removal of the supervisor positions. So um, I understand that budget decisions are difficult. I've been sitting through the meetings um, for two years now. I'm about to graduate. I have a lot of experience here, I think. Um, but I just wanted to talk about how much of an influence these supervisors have had on my education in my past few years at GL and at CMS too. Um, I can't even begin to describe how, how many interactions, whether it's a brief interaction with Mr. Diobro in the hallway about how robotics is doing, or a meeting with Mr. Degunas about how the Women in STEM Club is work, uh, sorry, is working on their um, CMS outreach proposal and it's very difficult as a student to describe the impact, but the supervisors have such a direct influence on how the students learn in the classroom, um, whether that means they're coming into the classroom, chatting. Like I have never felt more comfortable in this school than I have having the support of Mr. Ziobro and Mr. Dugunis with me. Um, and I think that in an effort to promote STEM and just science and technology today, I think both supervisory positions are very necessary. Um, as a senior that's going off to college in a couple months, I'm actually majoring in electrical engineering with a minor in either economics or maybe entrepreneurship. So I know quite a bit about how STEM is advancing and the importance of technological growth. And like Ms. Bradford was mentioning earlier, the school system needs to also develop to accommodate students living in the age of chat GPT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and we really can't do that without the help of two supervisors. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. Okay. No more comments on budget? Okay, so we will move on. I would like to make a motion to approve for all board members the adoption of the final budget with changes to the tentative budget approved by the Executive County Superintendent. Do I have an motion? So moved. Second. And, Second. And, and since we've already had discussion, I think we could move on to roll call. Hello? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I was, um, this budget only has money, as I understand it, for, for sort of putting back one supervisor, correct? That's what, we're, that's what the uh, sort of amend, amendments that were presented tonight. Um, so if I vote for this, does that mean, is that equivalent to saying I'm voting for only one supervisor and not two? Am, am I essentially eliminating a supervisor by voting for this budget? That's the question. So in the end, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're voting on the actual budget 
Right. So what would happen if the resolution D fails? That means two teachers that were added back will then be pulled back. The, the other choice is for me to just offer an amendment. Go ahead and gavel down. Get rid of it. Be soft. Okay, so, all right, so. No confidence in the superintendent, please. Okay. All right. So now, I've, but I've also noticed that there's huge amounts of money in medical benefits that get transferred to other accounts. So actually, isn't the money sort of there already if we wanted to do two more supervisors? No. Hmm? No. All right. So basically, you're saying a yes vote automatically eliminates one supervisor. So you're approving a total budget value and a tax increase. I realize that. Right. Yes. So that's really what you're voting on because anything could happen between the day today if we strike this budget and through, throughout the year. Um, and it happens every year. So um, some teacher will leave the district um, and maybe they will be replaced by someone who is more expensive. Um, perhaps um, some arrangement will not work and we need to fill positions. So, you know, this it is built into the budget that only one supervisor from tentative has been put back in. But these are, there is the ability to make changes. Overall, you are approving a budget uh, value and a tax levy increase. But But somehow the money magically appears if we need to hire another teacher, even if it wasn't in the budget. That seems to be what happens. Is that right? Not correct? Okay. And since we had discussion, we're going to move on to roll call. Ms. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Chanchuli. Yes. Dr. Forger. No. Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mrs. Kana. No. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Budget passes. Right. So we will now move on to committee and liaison report. Did you like? Yes. No, we did public comment. Oh, yeah. We have to do okay. oh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm jumping ahead. You are jumping ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So we're now a committee and liaison reports. So anybody? Gail, you have some. Go ahead. Uh, Yes, I uh, recently attended the New Jersey School Board Association Spring Education Symposium on April 25th. Uh, it was all day online. It was paid for by our tax dollars. So I wanted to give you a report on this. I took these workshops. One was titled Creating a Strategic Plan for Your District, which is coming up on us, which was beneficial. A bond referendum planning to communicate workshop, again, coming up in our community, the value of transparency in school public relations. Uh, there was also a workshop on the update of the New Jersey Trenton legislation and education advocates panel. There was also, I took a class or workshop on legal mandates in special education. And the final workshop I had was in a school board's role in, as a policymaker, policy review, development, and oversight. These came, most of those came with PowerPoint um, presentations, which I have links and I will pass these on to Julie to share with the board members. There also will be a video of each of these workshops posted within the next 24 hours on the NJSBA so that we can view them again and uh, take a look at them, especially with some things that are definitely coming up to our board. Um, in the role as my liaison, town council still struggles or is working, sorry, continues with their budget process. 
Uh, there's going to be a change in parking regulations on Hamilton Avenue next to the Columbia School lower parking lot that may affect parents going in and out. They created a safe video monitored exchange area next to the police department for exchanging of goods over the internet. The Recreation Committee continues their spring and summer recreation programs. They continue to register and operate. Summer concerts will take place. I have no updates on the Union County Educational Services Committee, no updates on the Truth Community Building and Inclusion Committee, and no updates on the District Evaluation Advisory Committee. Um, the PTO Liaison Committee was very interesting that I attended. It was a rotating curriculum. curriculum sorry, yeah, curriculum. Um, the district PTO parents leaders heard presentations from Ms. Kopaz, Dr. Greer, Mrs. Gardner, Mr. Mora on curriculum items. The parents also heard a presentation about an engineering project at GL for AP students following AP exams. The parents voiced their support for a systematic phonetic approach, and they also supported the time it would require to initiate the program. The parents also voiced support for the programs that were presented by Mrs. Gardner and Mr. Mora, and parents requested a permanent liaison to the committee. Um, and I'm not sure if this is the right time, but as a rotating member of the Board of Ed, it was my month to review the bills. And uh, <laughs> my compliments to the business office and especially to Alicia Bon Giovanni for an exemplary job well done. It took me an hour and 45 minutes and that was speeding along. <laughs> so the March accounts payables are in order. That concludes my liaison reports. Thank you. Anybody else to report? So um, I'm gonna be as brief as I can, but we had a two hour curriculum meeting. Um, so it, it, we went over a lot and it's really important stuff. Thank you, Gail, for going to the PTO curriculum meeting. I know those can be long, but they're important. Um, so we talked about effective school solutions with Mrs. Gardner and Mr. Mora. Um, this is really to help us in getting back some of our students who we have put out of district because we do not ha currently have enough um, stuff in in place to help these students with their needs. Um, this is talking specifically about mental health. Um, so we need to bring these students back because there are our students, right? They're Berkeley Heights and Mountainside residents who we want to be going to GL. So this would be a program at GL, it's ESS, and we are going to bring them in. Um, I have to give Mrs. Gardner and Mr. Mora so much credit. They worked so closely with this company, ESS, but also with the parents because um, we couldn't do the program if we didn't have the students. <laughs> so we needed to have them on board um, to come back. And I have to say they did an amazing job. And I think the big um, takeaway for me was that we will be able to help the students that are have less needs, but are still important, right? Needs on mental health and in the classroom and just getting through the day. And we all know mental health is extremely important right now, especially after COVID for our students. Um, the next thing we talked about is our special education course that Mr. Um, Greer, Dr. Greer talked about. Um, we are going to be able to do that again this year um, for our students, that culinary program. It's going really, really well. Um, I was just so impressed with the heart of our, our staff who just love these kids and want to do this program next year. And we're going to have even more kids next year, which is amazing. So I'm so glad that everyone pulled together last year and really made this happen and that we're building on it. Um, and then we talked about um, our math update. Um, we did um, big ideas last year and it's going really, really well. There will be some curriculum writing, I believe this summer to just tweak little things that our staff has found over the year. So we're still working on it, but it really has been a, a big success. And then other schools are now taking our lead and using big ideas in their classrooms. Um, so that's really exciting for us. Um, again, Mrs. Copaz is doing so much for our K through five or pre-K through five. Um, we also had a homework committee update. Um, they got together with a bunch of teams to come up with guidelines. Um, this is extremely important because we've seen where it hasn't been, right? We don't have guidelines for our teachers to help them, right? Come up with ways to get our students um, on the same page, right? Like some teachers 
had this or that, right? When we're trying to give them guidelines so everybody knows what is expected. And also for parents, I think that was a big part of this is that what parents should expect. If your child is struggling with homework, how much homework should they expect? And if it's over this amount, you should be contacting the teacher to find out maybe there's something that the teacher is not realizing that they're going home and struggling with, right? So it was it's to help both the parents and the teachers with these guidelines. Next is word study update. Um, I, again, this is an amazing committee that Mrs. Kopas has put together of teachers. There's eight reading specialists on this team, which is really, really important. Um, and we're talking about, um, so word study is spelling, but phonetics, and I don't even know, I can't get it all right, but it's, it's, it's so important. And I, I know that that team has been working really, really hard and they know how important it is to do this for our youngest students who really need help in this area. And the science backs this, that we need to look at this. And it's been a really long time. So I'm so glad that we were able to get it in the budget um, and we're gonna use ESSER funds to get it. So this is amazing. And I really wanna thank her team for working so hard because they really put in so much. They've already piloted one program and they are looking at one more program and then they're gonna decide which the second program to pilot. Um, I believe that this is gonna be on the May or June agenda. Well, we, we, if you recall, we looked at a second, the, the second one that we wanted to pilot this, uh, this week, and we've decided that that is not the one we want to okay. pilot. <laughs> so we still have to bring in one more, um, which means it will probably be, the recommendation will probably be on the June agenda. So if you guys have any questions, please reach out for us because we, um, our, our committee did really like where we're going and we've asked as many questions as we can of Mrs. Kopaz. Um, so we're, we're hoping that we can move forward with this as a board. Um, and then next we talked about middle school world languages. Um, we are going to be getting rid of the honors, meaning that we will no longer offer the honors in middle school for world languages but we will continue to offer differentiation in how we teach, right? If there's a student who is doing very well in French, right, they can still have the curriculum go with them, just like we would do in any other class. Um, but we will continue to offer it in the high school. And then we're gonna look at the AP classes. We hope that everyone approves it. Um, there were three classes, uh, two AP classes and one other class that would need our approval. Um, the committee talked about this. We talked about what we could do for our students. And so we hope that all of you will approve this when it comes onto the agenda. And my very last thing is I attended the NJSBA uh, Union County meeting. Um, I just wanted to bring up that they are raising our fees. I'm assuming we have this on our budget. Um, and they are also, um, they had the Union County Teacher of the Year um, come up and speak, and she was a first grade teacher, and she was great, um, and how much you could tell how much she loved her kids. And then they also um, were talking about looking into a gun safety report, so I still have to look into this, but I guess this report came out on how to help schools with gun safety, so I'm going to do more research on that. That is it. Thank you. Anybody else with a committee or liaison report before we move on? No? Okay. Uh, board communications. Okay, there are quite a few because these are built up from uh, the 313 meeting to current. So um, <clears throat> received a variety of emails, one about the OPRA response page that we have on our website, two emails uh, pertaining to a possible OPRA violation, uh, one email about a staff member, one um, email, oh, I'm sorry, one individual sent multiple correspondence asking about courtesy busing, uh, district, um, the BHAA sent um, correspondence uh, regarding the uh, meeting that they held with uh, personnel. Um, there was an email asking the board to consider 
adding certain uh, holidays to the school calendar. Uh, two emails regarding questions uh, about the tentative budget. And correspondence uh, giving their opinion on iReady math. Um, another uh, question about the posting of the budget. An email asking if high school, um, asking about high school's students being offered an opt out for physical education class. A email about aid in lieu in, of busing. Um, a community member asked if AP classes were going to be cut in the budget. Another correspondence commenting on, on several aspects of the 23-24 budget presentation. Um, four community members requesting to see the uh, full uh, tentative budget. A community member wanted Mr. Hyman to abstain from voting on the budget. Uh, another community member sent correspondence asking for clarification on the diversity committee at GL. And seven community members um, sent correspondence stating that they were not in favor of the administrative reorg. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, okay, so comments from the public on agenda items. So please, as before, come up, state your name, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, can you? Yeah. Good evening, evening, everyone. I'm Christian Joya, a student at GL and backed by fellow students sharing the same ideals as me. I would like to address the agenda item of the approved substitution list of the removal of Ms. Lawyer. I would like to speak on behalf of all students that signed the petition and from what I believe a good majority of GL students. Most substitutes come to school with the purpose just to complete their jobs which is no problem as I appreciate what they do for us, but on the other hand, Miss Aloya is different. Miss Aloya comes to school with the most uplifting energy and shows that she cares for the students. Not only does she show up to substitute, she builds everlasting bonds with almost every student, which can be seen by the amount of student support she has received during this time. Us students truly believe that having Miss Aloya in our school makes it a happier and more, more enjoyable place. I think that everyone in this world deserves a second chance and really hope that the members of the board and administrators of the school believe that too. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Karen Sicoli, and I have two students in our district, but my two concerns tonight are for every student in our district, not just my own. Number one, OPRA violations, and number two, my strong opposition to this plan survey of our high school and middle school students. What? On an agenda item. It's just my item right now as a community member. Right, if you want to talk about that at the end and in, at the very end, right now the comment section is on agenda items. Okay, so I'll come back. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board on agenda items, please? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, the minutes. So I would like motion to approve minutes, resolution A for all board members for executive session minutes from March 13, 2023, and regular session minutes from March 13, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Yes, second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call, please, Julie. Ms. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Chantuli. Yes. Dr. Forger? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mrs. Kana? Yes. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mrs. Penham? Yes. 
administration. Okay, I would like to make a motion to approve resolutions A through P, all board members. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. I have a question sure. on the policies. So policy 153, the annual appointments. Uh, I think the new language, there is no timing of these appointments. It was initially at the reorg meeting. So any reason why we are moving away from that or when do we think the timing is? Strauss Esme is sent out the revised policy according to code. So usually we do it at the reorg meeting. We sometimes have a follow-up in May, where uh, May or June, 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 June where we do um, for the school year. Yeah, yeah. May, yeah. So it's we, even though it's annually, we sometimes do it semi-annually. So are these not annual appointments anymore? I'm I'm not totally understanding the response. So. Um, Generally, January is for the reorg for the new board for January, like 23 to 24, and then June is for the school year. So their so annual appointment. The calendar year gives the newly seated board the opportunity to vote on the year that they will be uh, utilizing the services or having these appointments. But most of our vendors operate on a fiscal year because the school operates on a fiscal calendar. Um, so sometimes we will do both if necessary. We, I like to do them uh, at, at the beginning of the year so that everybody who is participating on the board has had an opportunity to have a voice in it, and they're not just doing a carryover. But sometimes the contract changes, and the, the vendors will change their contract as of July 1st. So maybe the rates increase on July 1st. So we may then end up doing like a reappointment and a, an approval of the contract in June for July through the year, but you then have the opportunity again in January to appoint or not appoint them. So everything yes, I know, cycle. I know. So if we- I don't know, I'm sorry, I didn't see this policy, but I don't know, so I don't know what the policy is saying. It, it's, um, There's no timing anymore in the policy. Okay. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm confused on what, how would this work to your point? If you approve somebody in in June mm -hmm. for the next fiscal starting July to June, we don't have the opportunity to change that in January. You can rescind. You can rescind an appointment if there's a an, um, desire to do so on a basis. We can put a rescission on an agenda. It's not common, but it could be done. If there's you know, if the entire board turns over and they just don't want those people anymore, and you know they can do a rescission. Okay. So I think um, because the elections also moved, the elections used to be in April, right. and people would be seated for the fiscal year. So that always it made sense to do it in July because then the board members were also part of the fiscal year. But now that the board um, elections for most schools are in November, and people get seated in January, p districts are split on the way they do it. So my feedback to the policy committee is just gonna give this a little bit of thought to make it less confusing. <laughs> um, if I can continue, policy 5841, uh, secret societies. I don't think there's a definition of the word secret in the way the policy is written. So if there are students that just create a little group of their own and choose to call it a society, that nobody in the school is aware of, does that qualify as a secret society and would they be in trouble? The policy has no clear definition, so that's why I'm trying to get the clarity. This is an old policy that's been on our books for years. Um, Strauss may, at our request, did an update of it. It is not a mandated policy, so I, I assume it is, I don't think it's a pro an issue we have where we have kids making secret societies, but I, I couldn't, I mean, if it was a society, a secret group that targeted other people, yes, they could get in trouble. I think it depends on what the group re represented. Got it. So again, my feedback for the policy committee, if we can get clarity so that, again, the interest is to not get people in trouble because we didn't know, um, that would be my, my feedback. Okay. And then policy 9324. It seems like it 
it's applicable to students, but I didn't catch a reference to it being applicable to employees of the district. Do we have a different policy with the same um, interest or application? Um, we couldn't employ someone who was a sex offender as a, in the district. So they would automatically would be fired. If they would pass, they would pass. They would never be pass a background check. Right. They would not pass. Yes, every every employee in the district has to be fingerprinted um, to make sure they are not. They have no criminal offenses. Okay. Okay. Um, the, are we doing it for the whole A through P? Yes. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're doing administration. Yeah, okay. A through P. Then. Uh, Item D, I mean, we've seen a lot of feedback even just now. We've had a bunch of feedback come through the last meeting where we tried to propose the reorg. Uh, I, I can't tell why we're doing it again. Um, this is, it's hard to understand why. Okay, anybody, any more discussion before we move on to roll call on A through P? No, Judy, can we have roll call, please? Ms. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Tanchuli? Yes, to all. Dr. Forger? Okay, um, on uh, policy 0153, I agree with Dipti, that should really go back to the policy committee. Um, so I'm gonna say no on that one. And uh, 5841 on secret societies, I think she has a good point. We really should have, I missed that when we reviewed it. I think we really should have had a definition. Um, and on D, so I'm going to say no on 5841. I'm going to say yes on the other policies. Uh, yes on B and C. But then when we get to D, eliminating two supervisors and creating one director, I'm going to say uh, no on that. I came in here thinking that's okay, but I listened to the public and I really don't think that this is a good idea. And I think that's going to be a little difficult for one person to handle both science and math. And we do have somebody, we already have people that can do that. And I was very impressed. I wish Catherine were here, but I was very impressed with her remarks. When a student praises a supervisor, that means a lot to me. Um, so I know it's going to cost a little money, but it's not going to be that much. And I think Educationally, it would be better to keep the two supervisors. So I'm going to say no on D. Then I'm going to say yes on the rest of them. Thank you. So no to policy 0153, policy 5841. No to D, yes to B, C, and E through P. Mr. Hyman. Yes? Mr. Hyman. Yes to all. Mrs. Khanna. No for policy 153, no for policy 5841, um, yes to the other two, yes to B, C, uh, and everything except D. Okay, Mrs. Stanley. Yes, and congratulations again to our high achieving students and teams. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Motions pass. Okay, education. I'd like a motion to approve resolutions A to E, all board members. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Do we have any discussion? Can we get a better sense of um, the Agency for Instructional Services? Uh, with kids tutoring, what subjects are we talking about? What grades? This is for a student who is on home instruction, so it's required by law. Oh, so it's not for the district? Nope. Got it. Okay. Any more discussion? Roll call, please, Julie. Ms. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Chantruly? Yes, except the saying on D is in D.
Dr. Forber. Yes. Go on. Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mrs. Kana. Yes, A through E. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Okay. Uh, Personnel. I would like a motion to approve resolution A through B for board members and resolutions W through CC, Berkeley Heights only. So, so I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Do we have any discussion? No? I just want to say congratulations to our teachers who will receive tenure this year. I know um, Dr. Riley has been working very hard not to give teachers tenure unless they really are going to make Berkeley Heights a better district. And I, I want to really thank all of our teachers that are going to get tenure this year. This means that you are really part of Berkeley Heights and you really want to make Berkeley Heights a better place. Thank you. Any more discussion? Yes. I'll just, I'm sorry, I was going to piggyback to congratulate also those who are retiring. Um, I can't speak personally to all, but I, I can to uh, one of the math teachers who was referenced tonight. It's a big loss for the district and wish him and everyone else well. Thank you. Yes. Um, I was going to basically uh, vote yes on everything, but then the public came forward and spoke in favor of the substitute teacher, and she spoke for herself, and I think she made a good case, so I'm going to vote no on E. Agree. Did you? I oh, know we haven't done roll call yet. Right, I was going to say. But he just wanted to okay. say that. Okay, we're, we're still on discussion. Anybody else with discussion? All right, if not, we'll move on to roll call, please, Julie. Ms. Ms. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Chantruly. Yes to all. Dr. Forger. Uh, Yes to all except E. E is a no. Mr. Hyman. Yes on items A through B, as in Victor. Mrs. Kana. Yes for A to B except E. Abstain on W and yes on X through CC. I'm sorry, no to E, abstain on W. W and yes to the rest. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Motions pass. Business. Uh, motion to approve resolutions A through M. All board members. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second, please. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Um, point F, the coordinated transportation services. Um, can you help us understand, if, or do we get some sort of a benefit kind of coordinating with these other commissions from a transportation perspective? So some of that goodness is baked into your number? Yes, they do. Um, so we may not use all of them, okay. but this gives you the opportunity to do so. Um, we do a lot of special education transportation with them. It prevents us from having to do the bidding process, which includes advertising costs um, and holding the bids, and they are much more efficient at it, uh, and they get a bigger pool of candidates than we ever would. So, And they can also do some magnificent things in the short term. Um, even if they can't find something long term, they can fill something at a day rate short term, which really helps us get through until we find a permanent placement. Got it. Can I ask about uh, H, the climate change pilot grant? Does, does any of that potentially apply to what we heard tonight from the Environmental Club or not apples to apples? And, and if not, what, what will where, where will that go? Yeah, there, thank you for the question. There are a lot of different pieces with climate awareness uh, materials that we're able to purchase. And so this one is being provided by the New Jersey Department of Education. You can see $6,660 is to uh, support education within our course, within our classes K through 12 with all different types of materials. There are hydrometers and different things that we're purchasing for students to be able to dig in a little bit more. Uh, there's another opportunity that we're also looking at as well in terms of elementary education, but this one here is specifically a grant from the Department of Ed to help support climate awareness education. Thank you. 
Uh, a question about that. Uh, do we are we do we, do we have to put do we have to put any of our own money into it or is this just not for this one? Uh, typically with grants or things 60, that you have to put in okay. to receive this grant, no. Any more discussion? I actually have two more. Okay. Sorry, Tom, are you done? Tom, are you done? Uh, a question about the Chromebooks. Uh, what students would be getting those and what do they have now? So I believe they are the same, and Mr. Scar is here. He can correct me if I'm wrong, right? They are the same model uh, Chromebooks that we have. It's part of a plan that we have, a replacement plan for the materials themselves. As we know that they get older, we need to replace them. So that's what they are. And it looks like we have uh, in our budget 500 here. So it goes within uh, the process. The high school students will receive them, and the devices from the high school that are still usable can be cleaned and, and fixed up and go to the middle school and, and vice versa all the way down. Okay. That's all. If you, so this is the number that pulled out of next year's budget and we are using funds. Is that this line item? Well, $144,000 was originally in the budget. That number got pulled out. By buying these now uh, at the volume discount, we can get more for less. So yes, that is this item. And we have this in our this year's budget already. No, we were able to save funds by putting the spending freeze on. Okay. And so we have stopped spending since February 15th. Got it. We've been able to accumulate enough funds to make this purchase. To make now this happen. And alleviate some burden on next year. Got it. Good idea. Um, point M, the legal services yeah. uh, maximum spend. Um, help me understand what was the budgeted amount for this year 2022-2023 this one seventy five thousand dollar number what would be our per pupil legal cost for the year if you have it no i can't give you that number but i can tell you what what is transpiring here so um when i first came in um and was preparing the budget i utilized the figure that was um used by my predecessor which was one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars um, I don't know if that was being monitored or not, but during the uh, end of last school year, in June, I became apparent that that was an insufficient amount, and we did a uh, revised amount for the 21-22 school year, pushing it up to 160. I think the uh, audit said we came in just about over 156. Uh, this year, um, in April of 20. Two, I had put 125 in for legal ser services. It is insufficient again. Uh, we are currently with, we have not even received all of March's bills yet. We've paid a portion of them, but we are already into past 110. So this would just increase um, the maximum professional expenditure for legal services for the remainder of the year and is an estimate um, based on trends. I don't know. Is there any kind of a cap at all on this? Is there what? A, a, cap. a cap on this legal services for the year? Is there a cap? Yeah, there... like a max. No. Okay. okay. So, is there any more discussion? No. Okay. Can we have roll call, please, Julie? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Chantuli. Yes. Dr. Forger. A through D, no. And uh, E through I, yes. And what about J, K, L, and M? Can you come back to me on that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Hyman. Yes, Tall. Mrs. Kana. Yes, for everything except M. I don't think it was M. Mrs. Stanley. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Are we coming back to Tom? We are. Okay. Uh, what did we, we left off at I, right? 
You said A through D, no. E through I, yes. Yes. So you want to know K is yes. What about J? What about it? Oh, yes. J, K, and yes. L is yes. Uh, maximum expenditures here. We raised it to 175 now for legal, so that's a definitely a no. Okay. Motions pass. Okay, finance. I would like a motion to approve resolution A through D, D, all board members. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Do I have any, is there any discussion? No? Yeah, I'm going to, on this uh, finance, on the checks, there's a check for uh, Mike Scarra. Uh, um, Tom, I cannot what? talk. Not, uh, we cannot discuss this now. Check I'm not something. discussing Mike. I'm discussing a check payment to Mike for a conference. So there's a regulation that he, that he has to submit a, a report what, about. What is he talking about? On which? This is on the checks. He's, he's right. identifying individual checks okay. from the bills list. Yeah, from the bills list. That's what we're supposed to do. Look at the bills list and decide if we want to pay a check or not, right? Pro please, so, please provide a check number. Okay, so okay, I'll give you some check numbers. 207. Oh, sorry. 207 922 is a no, but then we get to 28030. 28030. 28030. Now that's a trip. Is that enough digits? 28030. Yeah, it's, I got five, six digits. You want more? 28030. Oh, okay. 28030. Okay. So when, a, when an employee goes on a trip to a conference, they have to provide a report. And we're not supposed to uh, pay for the trip until we get that report. Do we have that report? You're not answering? Why not? No, I'm not. I have I have to approve this. Right? Then you should probably abstain or say no. Abstain or say no, please stop. So that you're saying there's no report. I'm saying I'm not answering that question. Okay. Who do I ask that could answer it then? You should have you, emailed. This isn't we, your role. You can you can talk by not publicly. So can are you abstaining or voting no? On that, I don't know. I don't know if there's a trip report or not. We didn't get to the vote. Okay. Discussion. All right. Okay. Well, so, I don't know. So I'm, I guess I'm going to say when no. You, when you get to, no, when you I get have to, to say vote, no on trip. You can determine whether it's no or abstain. I'm sorry, but uh, okay. So if there's a report, I'll say yes. If it's a, if there's a, if he, there's no report, it's a no. That's okay. It. So okay. when we get to the vote, and then uh, the there, then we get to C. B is yes. C is no. Oh. Wait, we're, we're, not, we're, we're not. What? We're still having discussion. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We're not on the vote yet. All right. I'm saying when we get to that vote, we get okay. to that part. Is there is there any more discussion from board members? I just have. It, it, it's for what Tom was asking. Just as uh, I think we have um, teachers. You know, um, uh, people take trips, go conferences, which is great kind of idea sharing. Um, I think Marley, Dr. Marley went to a conference, and I can't remember what it is, but is there a methodology where we capture the ideas? Is there a readout? Even doesn't have to be necessarily to the board all the time, but even within the district to say, here's, you know, five things that we heard at a conference, you know, three things maybe would be great for our district. Is there a formal process of taking that kind of a readout and, and you know, activating it? Not that I know of, no. Can we recommend, you know, um, just so that we can learn what we can other review it? Do. I mean, go, do you want to talk? I can speak to in the elementary schools. If if teachers go out on conferences, the expectation is that they turn key what they've learned to the rest of their teams. And I'm so going. That so that is an expectation. That is a formal process. In in elementary, I can't, again, I can't speak to six through twelve. I can't, but, and it's the same type of thing where we come back, we turn key, we talk to each other, even administrators, we share pieces personally. I take my own notes, then I share out with people copiously, shoot emails. Hey, here's a link. Did you think about that? Have you seen this? As those pieces go on, as we share professionally as professionals as well. So my my takeaway from that discussion just now is, I think if there's anything worthwhile that's coming out of these discussions, these conferences, I think the board members would love to see what you're hearing and listening and you know learning. This is really new business and not 
agenda. Can we move on then if we've had no discussion? Julie, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Chanchuli? Yes. Dr. Forger? Okay. Um, on A, check 207922 is a no, 208030 is a no, uh, B is a yes, C is a no, and D is a yes. No to 207922, 208030. No to B, no to D. No, wait a minute. B is, B is a yes, C is a no. Oh, B, B is okay. a yes, C is a no, yeah. and D is a yes. Yes. Got it, thank you. And uh, B is a yes. Uh, Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mrs. Kana. Yes, A through D. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mrs. Penna? Yes. Motions pass. Okay, so now we're at the comments from the public on any topic. As before, if you can please come up and state your name. And you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you for being patient. I feel like it's past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start again. Good evening. My name is Karin Sicoli, and I have two students in our district, but my two concerns tonight are for every student in our district, not just my own. Number one, the Oprah violations, which we heard about um, being emailed to you all. And number two, to, to express my strong opposition to the planned survey of our high school and middle school students. What gives this Board of Education confidence that Mr. Stephen Hopkins, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director, can remain as Oprah custodian when he fails at simple redactions resulting in private student information being released. There is a pattern of uh, disregard for data. Mr. And Coley, please, no names. Oh, You're discussing my name, I'm sorry, my names were released. Right. Other, this parents, is other parents' names were released. Just to be mindful, the board can't comment on personal matters because it's confidential. And so we just ask with the courtesy when referencing personnel, if you can speak to the board about the concerns. Okay. Our diversity, equity, and inclusion director, how can he remain Oprah custodian when he fails at simple redactions resulting in private student information being released? There's a pattern of disregard for data and for following state rules. Each of you know this is a Oprah violation. I wrote to each of you on the 17th, and I asked you for help on how you would act if your child's information was, re was released like mine was. And as of today, nearly two weeks later, not one of you have answered me or offered help. Our diversity, equity, and inclusion um, guy said this was human error. And so far, it's been overlooked, but no one has given me an answer on how this will be fixed. How will the members on this board allow this person to work with sensitive private student data as he prepares to survey our middle and high school students on their sexuality, their parents' income, their own mental health, and religious preferences when he fails at his other responsibilities that involve data management? God has been completely removed from our classrooms. We cannot celebrate Christmas as Christ's birthday and now this survey, you're interested in exploring our 12 year olds religious activities. Not only has this person failed as Oprah custodian, but under his watch as supervisor of world languages, parents, students and teachers, we all had to come together and we had to fight to keep the French language study available. Regarding the student survey in May, I want to educate myself and the rest of the parents listening and ask you, who created and designed this survey? Who will be administering the results? Who has access to this data? What's the goal? What's the viable response rate? 20%? Will action be taken on 20%? And since this is an optional survey, those who answer are a self-selected group, and that would influence the outcome or skew it. How much did this cost the district? Since I got some like questioning, I'm yeah. just going to finish this. How do we know that our children's names and answers won't be made public and just be shrugged off as human error? 18 or 11 through 18 year olds have very different abilities and experiences. We do not teach them using the same standards, yet this survey is a one size fits all approach. 
why is this, why is Dr. Varley and our DEI supervisor allowed to fly on taxpayer dime to San Antonio, Texas in February to share our district's DEI strategic plan to a national audience, yet our district website DEI tab is blank and parents, stakeholders have not even been given a report here on DEI. Parents and students have not even been given a simple definition of the words diversity, equity, and inclusion. You do not have permission to survey my children, and you do not have permission to share my children's information and call it human error. We do not trust you. Ms. Sinclair, you need to, to finish up, please. Yeah, last sentence. You are, not, um, you are not on this board of education to push a personal political agenda. You're not here to hire your friends or family or to oversee a collection of private and personal data from our children to be exploited. Fundamentally, you are here to make sure our children get an education. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board on any topic? Please, please come up. I'm just going to set this up. Great. Uh, Todd Najarian. Berkeley Heights. Um, so uh, I just wanted to understand, and I'm hoping you can answer this question tonight for everyone to know. So um, I'd like to understand how, and, and I'm again, if I'm wrong, tell me, please. But uh, how did the uh, admin and superintendent not follow district policy two, 6220? The policy states that public input must be sought before the budget is finalized. Um, what are the repercussions for not following your own policy? Uh, Robert, maybe you can help clarify as you had the policy committee and currently on the finance committee. Why didn't Mr. Najarian please policy? address your questions to me? Okay, Angela, then maybe you can clarify that. Thank you. Um, I was going to, I tried to get here earlier, I couldn't get here in time, but uh, tonight's budget presentation, um, you know, I, I it, it seemed very uh, interesting that there were cuts, there were not cuts. There was a question from one of the board members about the impact on students. Um, and if we're cutting teachers, that's an impact. And it was kind of sad that that didn't get acknowledged because there is an impact. And what we heard tonight was the public, as well as teachers, administrators, all speaking about that impact. But no one here on this table was able to acknowledge it. And I mean, guys, you work for the town, you work for us. And how is it that you can sit here and there's two members asking questions and there's eye rolls and head shakes still while they're asking questions, but yet one acknowledges we listen to the community. The rest of you are just, yes, 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 yes. I mean, it, it's, it's impossible to understand how everything can be a yes, how you can all agree to yes. and and. When you work for us as a community, the community's right here talking to you. We're talking to you. We're saying we don't agree. And you just bowl right through. So I really think you need to check yourselves because this is just, it's wrong. Um, secondly, I'm gonna go very quick because I see the timer, but I do wanna get through this. Uh, recently, elementary parents received a, the word study program uh, survey. I have no clue who did this survey, who created it, or for that matter, who reviewed it and approved it to be sent out. But um, it's gonna be a joke, right? Because there are a few questions and I wanna highlight these because I don't think any of you paid attention. But as a parent, I know several parents who did pay attention. First question, uh, explicit phonics instruction is valuable. Uh, spelling instruction is important and should be taught each day. Vocabulary should be taught in reading and writing. Homework should include word work, recognizing sounds connected to letters, reading basic words, having the ability to read harder multi-syllable words, understanding what words mean in isolation. Mr. Najaran, you need to finish up. I'm wrapping up, absolutely. You. Uh, understanding what words mean in context, spelling accurately in isolation, spelling words accurately in writing. You asked the parents of this district if these things were important. Why did you not send a survey and just ask, do you think education is important? And lastly, lastly, um, I would like to know when Dr. Varley and Mrs. Cott's contracts are up for renew renewal. 
I would like to recommend that they are not reviewed. And um, fact, Mr. Jarin, your time's up. Thank you very much. Mr. Najarin, your They're time is up. Thank They're you. Ruining them. Thank you. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board on any topics? Jared Weissfeld, Berkeley Heights. Good evening. In September of last year, I asked the police chief to take a demo of an app with me that was recommended to both of us by Lori Aladef. The chief jumped at the opportunity. After the demo, he was very impressed. Then the following month, when the school district said they couldn't afford the app, my wife and I offered a donation to the school district for a sec security app that is used in over 3,500 schools. The Finance and Facilities Committee turned down my donation because it wasn't equitable since it was only available to one school as a pilot program and not all six. They did offer to accept my money though and spend it on school security as they saw fit. I declined. There was an incident of a student bringing an airsoft gun to school and having it on him for hours before somebody told an adult. Once the officer in the school was told, he handled it immediately. The principal sent out an email to parents about see something, say something. That's what the app would have done. I wasn't done fighting for that app, and I assure you the chief wasn't either. We spoke to the app company a few weeks ago, and they agreed to donate a pilot program for all six schools for one year, absolutely free. We fought for every single student, teacher, parent by getting this app for all of the schools. I'm here tonight because I thought this was going to be on tonight's agenda. Clearly it isn't. I know why. The Finance and Facilities Committee has finally requested a demo of the app that they have known about since November. You would think before they turned down a donation, they'd at least see what the app did last year. And let me just finish up with this because I have, oh no, I'm good. Uh, each and every one of you are elected officials. This demo is 15 minutes. You can ask all the questions you want. You can do this tomorrow. At a previous board meeting, a board member asked our business administrator why we needed two additional SLEO 3 officers. He asked her if children in the elementary schools were safe. To that member, kids in elementary schools haven't been safe since Sandy Hook. A few weeks ago, a psychopath went into a Christian elementary school and killed three nine-year-olds and three administrators. One nine-year-old was killed trying to pull the fire alarm to save her classmates and teachers. Did you know that the shooter's initial target was a different school? But that school had too much security, so they chose a school with no security. I asked that the board put the app on the May agenda that gives you two weeks to demo this app and vote it out of the committee. Show parents and teachers you care about their safety. If you vote no, then you vote no. Just take a vote. The app was turned down because of equity. Yet we have six schools and now have four SLEO 3 officers. How do you decide which students and teachers' lives are less valuable? Lastly, our chief of police and that whole department is phenomenal and would do anything to protect these students and teachers. Board members, raise your hands, please, if you have ever asked the chief what he needed to keep our children and teachers safe. Thank you for your comments. Sure. Um, so, Mr. Weisfeld, Chief Massimino called me, I think, uh, about a week uh, and a half ago and talked to me about the donation for the six buildings. I did bring it up to the Finance and Facilities Committee. They had a great deal of questions, which is understandable. And there is a huge scope of work that we would have to discuss with the app company. So um, I reached out to the Finance and Facilities Committee to see if we can get a meeting on the books so that we can do the demo and they can ask the company directly these questions. So um, we're in the process. It's just, it's not something that can just immediately happen. It's, it, there's a process behind adopting anything within a school district. And I will, the public com, the public input on the budget, we have had three public meetings on the pub for public input. So I did want to address that. Um, none of this has been done in secret. It has been all very transparent. Okay, so I'd like to move on to new business. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Ms. Kopex, did you have something? Oh, oh okay. 
All right, so I'd like to move on to new business. Um, I would just like to remind all the board members that the deadline for the online board self-evaluation is May 1st. Please, if you can all make sure you have that done so that we can have all the information ready for the May 11th meeting when the New Jersey School Boards Association representative Patricia Rees comes to discuss our board goals and you know, talk us through the process. So please, just a reminder. All right. If there is no more new... On, on that point, so the expectation is we have the meeting on the 11th and then maybe adopt it like for the next year, I guess. I suppose she will talk us through the process. Because the board has never done this before, this right. is very new, not really sure what the process is moving forward. She said she'll come with the information and help us adopt board goals and they talk us through the process. Okay. All right. Um, Mrs. Penna, can you show us where the link is or send us the link? Sure. I thought I did on my last email. No? Okay. Okay. But I'll send it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, You have to kind of go through it. There's a little, I can send a little screen. I can send it to you again. Yeah. yeah no Thank worries. You. Sure. Thank Not a problem. Okay. Any, any other new business? If they Going back to the report idea. <laughs> um, I, I, I think it'll be valuable to kind of hear um, what is our district learning through these interactions with other districts, other uh, administrators, and, and see you know how we can actually get these ideas and implement some of them. So, sorry, Tom. Tom, did you have anything at the new business before we adjourn? Hello. Okay, on this uh, survey, I don't know if it's gone out, but I have grave concerns about it. This is not new business, Tom. Yeah, it'll get to be new business in a second. Tom, okay. this is not new business. Well, this I, is I, for I, new business, please. Right. Do you I, have anything I, for new business? Yes, I do. Okay. And you just be patient. I'm being Angela, patient. Angela, be I'm, patient. I'm just making sure be that you patient. are I'm, the guy. I know, please. Ms. Angela, I know okay. very well, okay? So the concern is... We're going to send out a survey, and I'd like to get a legal opinion on whether that survey can be done under state law, because I looked at the state law and voluntary surveys, there's very strict rules, and the results have to go to the State Department of Ed and the State Board of Health. So that's all. I just need a legal opinion that we can actually send out this survey the way it is. That's all. Thank you. And Okay, if there's no more new business, I would like to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion, uh, meeting adjourned. What about the over violation? I brought up already as my question. Is going to be answered?